You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. On a hot and humid day at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, finally the ECU Pirates are set to kick off their 2018 campaign against defending HBCU national champion, the North Carolina a and Aggies. Hello, everyone, and welcome up to the broadcast booth alongside Stan Luter. I'm Josh Appel. Thanks so much for joining us. And, Stan, we thought we were going to get this game in last night, so why are we here today? A funny thing happened on the way to kickoff today. It started thundering and lightning. The power was out on the field. The Aggie, there's the thunder. There's the lightning. And you know what happens after that? A whole lot of rain. The teams are ready to go. They were ready. He's wanting to play. He wants to see a game. There he comes. It rains. It rains and rains. About 930, they had to call this football game. So we say, hey, let's, let's play two. Let's do it again today. Well, we are going to play today. They're getting set for kickoff behind us. And, Stan, let's take a look at these two quarterbacks today, two opposite ends of the spectrum. Really excited about watching these two quarterbacks. First, you've got the long veteran, Lamar Renard, 27-0 as a career starter. Can throw a nice football. Almost 3,000 yards he threw for, 27 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes with the ball. He can lead these Aggies. He's cool under pressure. He's going to have to do that today on a hot day. And if he does, Sam Washington's going to be very happy at the end of the football game. You know, on the other side, you've got a guy that's untested. That's Reed Herring. This will be his first start as an ECU Pirate. He did throw one pass last season, and that was for a touchdown. Now he's got to continue the momentum. Scotty Montgomery loves the fact that he's a guy that can handle the pressure. He throws a good football. He's got great size. All those things will need to do if they expect to knock off the Aggies. In last season's home opener, ECU with the loss to defending FCS champ James Madison. They're hoping for a different result this afternoon. It's the Aggies and the Pirates coming up next. To refresh you for what's next. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Welcome back to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville. Josh Appel, Stan Luter with you. The Pirates and the Aggies about to kick off almost 24 hours later than originally planned. There's Sam Washington in his first season as A&T head coach, earned his first career win last week over number six Jacksonville State. It was the first time an A&T coach had beaten a ranked team for his first win. And then you take a look at Scotty Montgomery. He's in his third season at ECU, hoping for a different result this year. Six and 18, back-to-back -back three and nine seasons. But he is fired up about the depth that he has this year with this Pirate squad. They feel like they had a great fall camp and also the fall winter break. They worked out very hard. He said this is the best condition team we've had. This is the most speed we've ever had. And they're really excited about what can happen for East Carolina football. And Sam Washington, the longtime defensive coordinator for North Carolina A&T State University, part of the success that Broad Broadway had winning those two HBCU national championships, finally gets his chance to be the head coach. And if last Saturday was any indication of what Sam Washington brings to the Aggies, they're not going to miss a beat from Broadway to Washington. The fans at Dowdy Ficklet are on their feet. They waited a long time for this day. Noel Ruiz set to kick it deep. Trayvon Brown waiting at his goal line. We're underway in Greenville. Brown from the three. To the 15 cuts it towards the middle, and ECU will start first and 10 at the 20. So we get our first look at Reed Herring making his first collegiate start. Made his debut last year in a reserve role against Virginia Tech. But this is his first start. Only thrown one pass in his career. But Scotty Montgomery excited about what this sophomore from Raleigh brings to the table. Strong arm. Guy that can be special. A very solid pocket passer. We'll see how Scotty tries to get him into this ball game. Maybe some short passes, some screens. Get the run game established. We'll talk more about it. Play action on first down, quick hitter to the near side for Brown, and he's hit right away and dropped at about the 22-yard line, making the 23. Brings up second down. Nice, simple, easy pass, first down. Trayvon Brown, one of the impact players, we'll talk about his great career. 60 receptions last year, seven big touchdowns, and Mac McCain, six interceptions last season, Josh, three of them he returned for touchdowns, one big against North Carolina Charlotte, another FBS opponent. Another quick pass and a first down for ECU. 
Right, Blake Prohl with his first career catch, and it's a first down for the Pirates. It'll be interesting as East Carolina starts to throw the football early. North Carolina a has some solid defensive backs. We talked about McCain, Chiambre Abraham, the other corner, number 14, Darden and Bethay. They're going to be tested this afternoon. Gave up over 330 yards last week against Jacksonville State. Herring stays perfect. Another quick pass. And a five-yard gain on first and ten. And a late flag after the play. Another nice. one flies in as well. And one of the things that Sam Washington and his staff talked about last week was that they were not happy with the three dead ball penalties and the ten penalties overall. You make the tackle, and then let's get over there. And a little something extra there. automatic first down. So a good start for the Pirates. They're already... In an NC A and T territory, after only running three plays, not a smart play by Bethay after making the tackle. But one thing you've already seen early in the first three or four plays for East Carolina, trying to get Reed here into some kind of offensive rhythm. So first and ten from the A and T forty-seven. Herring, a good start, three for three, and here's Anthony Scott with his first carry of the season, and he loses a yard. Josh, the big question for East Carolina, will they be able to establish any type of run game? Keep this in mind. They only had three games last year where they rushed for an average of over four a ball game. a t one of the stingiest run defenses in all last year's football, just in case a solid defensive tackle comes up with the play. Anthony Scott just back on the team this year. Missed all of last year due to academic reasons, but he worked his way back on, and he's earned the number one spot on the depth chart. Second and 11, taking a shot deep, but some miscommunication between Herring and his receiver, Terrell Green. The senior from Charleston brings up third down and long. And you talk about Anthony Scott, a guy two seasons ago that carried the ball almost 80 times for nearly 385 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He had a nice camp after sitting out, played hungry, speed. ECU's got a bevy of running backs, but so far, starting off, Anthony Scott's going to be the guy. Third down and long, Herring to throw. Fires over the middle, has a man open. It's Prohl on a first down inside the 35 of the 34. Yes, that's the same Prohl. Blake Prohl off the tree from Ricky Prohl. So what does he do real well? He knows how to run excellent routes. Runs about 15 yards, finds a hole in the defense right here. Get a great look there, find Prohl. Sits down between the linebackers and defensive backs. Makes the catch, keeps the pirate drive going. Herring four for five on this opening drive. First and ten, ECU at the 34. Herring off play action. Fires deep for Prohl again, and it's overthrown incomplete. You mentioned it a moment ago, but worth talking about a lot, the matchups. Who's going to cover Prohl out of the slot several times? You've got great defensive backs, as we mentioned. Mac McCain, I would dare say, is going to probably end up in man coverage a lot against Trayvon Brown. Brown's got the excellent speed through to him on the first play. Don't be surprised if East Carolina uses him a lot in deep. This is one of their favorite things last year was stacks on both sides. You can run out of throw out of this a short game. Quick pass to Green on the right side. He makes a move around one, has the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 24-yard line. I actually marked that right at the marker, but it is good enough for a Pirates first down. Terrell Green, the senior was a sprinter on the East Carolina track team the last couple of years, so he's got the blazing speed. Again, too much time if you're an Aggie fan for him to throw the ball. Eludes one tackler and brought down by a bevy of Aggies. Fresh set of downs for the Pirates. Blitz from a &T. Herring over the middle. Has Ferrier. And another first down for the Pirates. What a start for the sophomore in his first career start. He's six for eight early on, and they go no huddle. They hurry to the line in the red zone for the first time. Another one of the outstanding East Carolina receivers is DeAndre Ferrier, the 6'1 junior. Comes out of the slot. Scotty Montgomery raved about him having an excellent camp. Herring knew he was going to be hit, stayed in the pocket, threw the ball, another strike. Well, this passing offense. Previous play is under review. This ECU offense has excelled in passing under Scotty Montgomery. It's been the running game and the defense that has been the bugaboo for them. But they'll take a look at this catch from Ferrier. I'm not sure I saw anything, but they'll take another look. Our replay official today is Matt Aloiso. East Carolina threw for over 317 yards last season. 
but their run game was held to a measly 105 yards. And Scotty Montgomery said, we have got to be able to run the football to make our passing game even more effective. Let's take a look. Heron stays in there. He knows he's going to get hit, and he freshly took a lick by Kevin Woodward. Kevin Howard, I should say. I don't see a bobble here. I think this is a clean catch. There's the hit. Pro comes down. I think that's going to be a catch and a first down for the Pirates. What's impressed you most on this opening drive about Reed Herring, the sophomore? Stayed in the pocket, poised, and the fact that the offensive line of East Carolina, and we don't talk a lot about those guys because of the run game. We take another look right here. Brings it to his body. Yeah, I don't see anything. I, I don't see anything about it. John Spellacy, number 58, is the center. He's the anchor of this offensive line, along with Garrett McGinn, number 52, the right tackle. And they have given so far hearing a lot of time to kind of read the defense and throw the ball basically where he wants to. Other than that hit a moment ago, I don't think Herring's backside has hit the ground yet. And Herring is the first quote-unquote homegrown quarterback that ECU has put in the starting role since Shane Carden was an ECU Pirate. They've gone with transfers the last few years. This review taken quite a while. Take a look again. Pressure up the middle by a and and that's a solid lick, a clean lick by Howard. And, and again, I, I don't know that I see anything, but maybe it's the spot they're looking at. The, the notebook is out, and usually that's a sign that something might change here. This is a very lengthy review. Henry Wimber on the headset with the replay official, Matt Aloiso. Let's take one more look, see if we can find anything. After review, we have personal foul, targeting, defense, number 54, hitting with the crown of the helmet. The penalty will be half the distance from the end of the catch. We have first down. Number 54 on North Carolina A&T is disqualified. Well, that's Kyan Howard, the redshirt freshman. The coaching staff very excited about him, but now they lose him for the game on the targeting call. I didn't even that, think they was, were looking that, at that. I did, yeah, I was. I... <laughs> Big blow for A&T. His and second game of the season lasts less than five minutes. I'll be very honest with you. Now, I thought that was a clean hit on the quarterback. But we'll, we'll, we'll take a look again maybe in a second. First and goal for Herring and the Pirates on the opening drive of the game. Handoff up the middle. It's the first carry for Trace Christian. And, and he might have gotten a yard. Things getting a bit chippy down there early in this game. Well, this is a game that, and we talked about it yesterday, it's about respect for both teams. East Carolina. You know, back to back three and nine seasons. They're accustomed to winning down here. AT's accustomed to winning. They've been winning really big, and they feel like that they don't get the just due that, that they deserve. Been an outstanding team and an outstanding program. So this is a big game. State schools never played each other. Herring to the end zone for Brown, and it's out of bounds. Third and goal. This is a, an AT defense, which under Sam Washington has been ranked in the top 10. And FCS for defense five times in the last seven years. Well, Sam's led a, a great defense. They've had a, they have a good offense to, to balance it. But a and for many, many years, they've, everybody talks about Blue Def defense, and Blue Def is back. Trips to the left for Herring on third and goal. Blitz from a and He backs up, dumps it off, and it is caught by Christian. But it goes down at the five. And we'll see what Scotty Montgomery elects to do. He's going to send out the field goal unit to take the points on the opening possession. Again, a and elects to put pressure on here and up the middle. Aaron has to get rid of this ball just a little quicker than maybe he wanted to and some good other throw. Christian does a good job of even to come back and catch it, but definitely short of the end zone and short of any possible first down as well. Short field goal for Jake Verity. The junior from Bremen, Georgia. High snap. Verity's kick. It's good, and the Pirates are on the board first. The field goal on the opening drive for ECU. a and will get the ball for the first time when you come back.
Down the now. Jake Verity's 22-yard field goal puts ECU up 3-0. A 13-play, 77-yard drive to open the game for the Pirates. Took 422 off the clock. And ECU has a 3-0 lead over North Carolina A&T. Reed Herring, very impressive on the opening drive in his first career start. 7 of 10, 56 yards. And he puts points on the board. Looked calm, cool, and collected. Now we'll get a chance to look at A&T's offense for the first time. Back deep for the Aggies, Malik Wilson, the redshirt senior, took a 98-yard return to the house last week in the 2017 win over Jacksonville State. As Caleb Pratt, the lefty, boots it deep. And Wilson watches it go out the back of the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for Lamar Raynard and this a and offense, the 25. Reynard, the reigning MEAC Player of the Year one season ago, a finalist for the Deacon Jones Award, which is given out to the top player among HBCU colleges. Reynard in this offense, though, struggled a bit last week. They were outgained 403 to 148. A good matchup for the A&T offense this afternoon. He's under a lot of pressure, a few drops. And you expect him to come out today a, a little sharper on the offensive attack. One of the big questions for A&T is how will this offensive line hold up for the second straight week? Not very happy with their offensive production a week ago. Play action on first down and a drop on first down by Elijah Bell. Set a school record last year with 11 touchdowns. He's the go-to target for Raynard. Take a look at our impact players on offense for A&T. Markwell well, Cartwright. Well, yeah, Markwell Cartwright was the top rusher in the MEAC last year as a power guy can go inside as well as out and Kendall Futrell who's a local guy played at South Central High School battled some injuries a season ago and is very excited about being able to play and they'll play him in what they call the bandit position so he'll stand up number 44 and try to make some plays first carry for Cartwright is a big one Picks up nine yards, sets up third down and one. And a good job on the offensive line of A&T, blocking through trail number 44, kicking him inside and then finding that hole. And again, what Cartwright can do is he's got great vision. A little bit of over-pursuit by 44, that's for trail, and he found that hole and a good job blocking offensive line. Malik Jackson, 62, Dante Keys, number 79 for A&T. Third down and a short one. Cartwright again trying the right side, and he has the first down by a yard to the 36. A&T on a season ago was 43% on third down conversions. One of the things that they didn't do a good job of last week is converted on third down and trying to have these long, sustained drives. It's a team that doesn't mind running the football, but they can throw it well, but they want to run. They want to pound you between the tackles. Good drive so far for AT. Now, can East Carolina stop them? That's the big question everybody's talking about in Greenville. What will the defense do? They've got a new defensive coordinator this year from, coincidentally enough, Jacksonville State, the team who East, uh, North Carolina AT defeated last week. Reynard flushed out of the pocket, dumps it off to Cartwright. It's off his hands and incomplete. And this ECU defense struggled mightily last year, gave up 540 yards per game. Made a couple of changes at defensive coordinator before bringing David Blackwell in this year. And they're hoping to take advantage of that speed on defense. Outside the pocket, tries a little dump down pass. And again, this is a two drops so far for A&T receivers. Cartwright's a guy that had about five receptions a season ago, and they use him as a good guy as a pressure release. Second down. Cartwright the carry, and he's brought down from behind. Nice play in the backfield. Nate Harvey, the senior, just earned a scholarship. And he comes up with a TFL. It's a loss of one. Harvey and third down along. came into East Carolina as a running back, as a fullback early, was a preferred walk-on. And as you mentioned, has earned his scholarship and comes from that defensive end spot and a sure tackle, only six tackles last season. There's the first big one of the 2018 season. Good play by Nate Harvey. 
Crowd on their feet here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. They want to see their defense get a stop on the Aggies opening drive. Third down and 11. Trips left and one right. Four-man rush over the middle and through the hands and a pass too tall for Ron Hunt. And North Carolina A&T will punt on its opening drive. Two of those three passes that have been dropped were nice passes. Hunt's got to watch that in and catch it. Looked like they might have had something. May have been close enough to get the first down, but another pass that goes between the hands of a player. And you see Lamar Renard talking to his guys about that. We've got to come up and make plays against East Carolina. The freshman Michael Rivers on to punt. Colby Gore waiting for ECU. The Pirates don't have a punt return for a touchdown in 167 games. Sixth longest streak in the country. Gore from the 20. And he's dropped at the 30. Colby Gore on the return for the Pirates. And that's where the Pirates will take over on the other side. 3 0 Pirates here from Greenville. Garcia versus Porter, Saturday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on Showtime. Season opener for the Pirates. Looking for win number one to open the year. A&T 1-0. Pirates opening up their second drive halfway through the first quarter at their own 30. Reed Herring in his first career start going deep down the sideline, but out of the range of Terrell Green brings up second down. This ECU offense... Seven times last year, put up 400 or more yards, but the majority of those coming through the air, they really struggled on the ground. Just one 100-yard rusher. Here's a shovel pass left for Anthony Scott, and a decent gain on second down to the 34. Helmet came off for one of the defenders, Antoine Wilder, so he has to go off for a play. Quickly, it's third down and six for ECU. We'll see the adjustments now. That was a very impressive first drive for East Carolina. You see so much more passing by the Pirates than, than the rushing yards, averaging just a shade under 25 points. When they scored first last year, they were 2-2. Two and two, did only four times. So getting off to a quick start was something that I felt like East Carolina had to do. So far, so good. Here's a huge third down for them. Keep a drive going. A&T jumps, so a free play for the Pirates. Aaron going for Brown, and he can't make the play. It's overthrown, but no matter. It'll set up a third down and one after the offsides. Offside, defense, number 94. Five-yard penalty, third down. Plain, disciplined football. A&T averaged about 65 yards a ball game in penalties. Number three in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. East Carolina gave up about 58 yards, was 10th best in the AAC. A&T can ill afford to give East Carolina easy plays, and when they do, East Carolina's got to take advantage of it. Herring under center for the first time. They give to Scott, and that's going to be close. It'll depend on the spot. Anthony the official Scott on the Harry. near side comes in shy of the, the 40, the and it is going and to be fourth down. down. So the A&T defense holds strong on third and one. Let's see if Scotty Montgomery elects to go for it here. Paul Darden came up from his corner spot and made a solid tackle. A timeout called by ECU. Scotty Montgomery wants to talk this over. Well, it's the first game of the season. <laughs> and, and one of the things that, that Scotty and his staff have talked about this year on offense as well as defense is being aggressive. So... I, I don't know. I think what you've got to do is let, let's see if you can get them to jump off sides. It's fourth and about an inch, and I saw this yesterday in a, in a game about this same field position. The coaches, I think it was the NC State game, and they went for it and eventually got a, a point out of it, got some touchdowns. So I think they're also checking the yeah. spot on this as yeah, well. I, if, it's, if it's fourth and a short one, I, I, I might actually think about going for it. The way that the defense for ECU played on the opening drive. Certainly something to consider, but again, if you don't get it here, you're giving A&T's powerful offense. Well, then that, that challenges my defense and, you know, and, and my offensive line. A lot of coaches would say back in the day, if we can't get a half a yard, we're not going to beat people. And again, we've talked about the offensive line has been a, a problem running the football, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll are, see. Are you surprised that coaches don't go for it more in situations like this? 
around the 40s on both sides. It's risky. Short. It's risky. You got you to know your team. As you see, David Blackwell has come in and, and infused some enthusiasm on the defensive side. Defensively. Think about this now. They gave up. And they wanted to check on the spot. 45 yards a ball game, 45 points a ball game, they gave up. And you look at what they did defensively. Worst defensively in all of college football. And so you need – they needed to make an improvement. That's just, that's just the bottom line about it. And one of the things that Scotty Montgomery told us when we spoke to him this week – what he wants to see from this defense, less pass breakups. Don't go for the pass breakups. They need to force more turnovers. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it last year. Yeah. And he wants to see more of that this season. They only forced three or more turnovers one time last year, and that was in that overtime loss to Tulane. Here he goes, fourth down. Discipline on both sides of the ball here. Anthony Scott, the tailback on fourth and one. It's a keeper, though, for Herring, yeah. pushing off the right side, and he got just <laughs> enough for the first down. Just needed to break the plane of the 40. Good safe call. And that is, again, hearing some confidence. It's a good push right there inside. Go between that center and the guard and tackle that A-gap. Cortez hearing 70. Spellacy 58. Find a little room, get the first down. Heron's a big kid at 6'3", so he can stretch and get that first down. I was just about to say, it helps when you've got that kind of height. He's actually up to almost 200 pounds now. When he came into ECU as a freshman, he weighed just 160. Been in the system for three years, finally getting his chance. Anthony Scott on first down, finds a hole on the left side, and he brings it close to midfield of the 49 for a gain of eight. Anthony Scott, a senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, has that home run potential when he's in the game, but again, last year, the Pirates didn't really have him as an option. He missed the entire season due to academic reasons. He's back this year, and they've got a, a nice, healthy stable of tailbacks in 2018. Herring to Brown, a first down and more. Brown inside the 40, and he's brought down finally at the 38-yard line. You've got to give cushion, but not that much. Matt McCain got caught sitting down on the receiver, and Brown is a very good guy, could get by you. Gave him too much room. Brown makes the catch, gets the first down. And I'll say it again, a great job by the offensive line of East Carolina to give Reed Herring not only time, but rhythm and confidence. First and ten, Herring for Brown again. A lot of contact, and what a catch by Brown. Inside the 20 to the 16. One of the top receivers in all of college football. Led this East Carolina team at 6-2. Goes up against Mac McCain at 5-11. He wins that battle. Comes back to ball, protects it from the defender, blocks out McCain. McCain, an outstanding defensive back a season ago. And because you've got McCain on one side of the field, Abram on another, it's really been one of those situations where Abram has become a very good defensive back because he didn't want to throw to McCain's side. But this matchup today of Brown versus McCain, wow, that's going to be interesting to watch. So far, Brown's getting the best of it. Brown 1,000 yards a season ago. ECU has had a wide receiver with at least 1,000 yards in six straight seasons. And you look back at the history of this program, regardless of what the record is, they always seem to have a guy, whether it's someone like Trayvon Brown or Zay Jones, Justin Hardy as well. Here we go. First down from the 16. Play action. Brown in the end zone, and he got held up a little bit, and there's the flag. Brown is giving McCain fits in this first quarter. Take a look again. The play fake holds the backers, and you said one-on-one coverage. You could see just yes, before we got in the picture Defense, the left hand of McCain. Here we go. The foul occurred in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. So on these first two Pirates drives, they moved the ball extremely well against Sam Washington's defense. And again, the Aggies gave up 400 yards last week, but they forced a bunch of turnovers and a kick return for a touchdown and a blocked kick to help them win by three. First and goal, Herring moving to his right, throws over the middle, and it's picked off. The Aggies bringing it back the other way. And they'll take it back the other way. And it's McCain one more time. 
Can Prohl catch him? No! Touchdown, Aggies! 109 yards for the Celebration Bowl MVP from a year ago. And North Carolina A&T has the lead. Last year, Mac McCain sealed the deal against North Carolina Charlotte with a huge interception. He had a 100-yard interception against Morgan State and then topped it off with a 78-yarder. He read the eyes of Herring. Herring kept the ball out there. Pearl's trying to chase him down. He's not going to get him. McCain, end zone, touchdown, Aggies. That ball from Herring a little bit behind Green, and that allowed McCain to step in front of it. That's, a, that's an inexperienced mistake there from Herring. Noel Ruiz on for the extra point. Low snap. It's Hamlin. Ruiz boots it through and gives the Aggies a 7-3 lead. Mac McCain, 109 yards for the pick six, and the Aggies in front for the first time. When your TV service gets better, camping gets better. Five oh nine to go in the first quarter. Mac McCain takes it the distance and then some for a pick six. Well, he's done this before, and you can take a look at what he's seeing. You roll out, and he gets this ball there, and this stays in the air a little bit, but maybe not that much. It's a nice pass, but McCain has great, great closing speed. And you throw it to that side of the field, there's not going to be much he can do. Pro, look at the effort there, trying, trying, but Mac McCain has made a. He's made his name, his seventh interception of his career. And how about this? Four of them have been pick six. And ECU will start the ensuing drive. Reed Herring hoping to bounce back after that pick six from the 21. And unfortunately for Mac McCain, he only gets credit with an 100-yard pick six when he really started at the back of the end zone. Now, nah, they only counted from end zone to end zone in college. If he's in the NFL in a couple of years, then you got 109. But the interesting thing about this is that how often do you get a chance to tie or break your own school record? He's done it twice now, 100 <laughs> yards interception. So, you know, again, but the matchups of the wide receivers versus the defensive backs of North Carolina A&T is something to keep your eye on this entire football game. Herring, play action, rolling to the left. And did Brown come down in bounds? No. Just a bit late with that throw, and Brown couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. And one thing you've got to be able to do if you read here is never forget about that interception. Don't worry about that. That's going to happen. And I like the call by Scotty Montgomery. Roll out, take half of the field away, make an easy throw. That one just got away from him just a little bit. They stack two receivers on both sides. And a quick pass to the right for Green. It's through his hands. And it gets walloped by Amir McNeil, the redshirt freshman. And just like that, it's third down and ten. McNeil, McCain, Abram, Derek Williams when he gets in the ball game, Darden and Bethay, the defensive backs, all are very aggressive. And one of the things you notice in the Jacksonville State game, they were picked on a little bit by getting caught looking inside, but they're also very, very big hitters, as we saw in that second down pass. Empty backfield and the shotgun herring on third down and some miscommunication with Anthony Scott, his running back. And the Pirates go three and out the drive after the pick six. Herring lost his helmet as well on the hit. One of the first times that a and has been able to put a little pressure on Herring. Julie McKnight, number 95, lays a solid lick on the young quarterback. So ECU goes three and out. There's John Young, the sophomore transfer from West Virginia, on to punt for the first time. And I like that. You see Scotty had his arm around him, talking to him, encouraging his young quarterback. Hey, you've only had three drives really in your career. You've had some good. You've had some bad. It's going to happen for you. Don't worry. 
Derek Williams lets this bounce at the 40. And ECU's coverage team is there to down it at the 38. Corey Sargent, the first one on it. And Scotty Montgomery raved about Reed Herring to us when we spoke to him earlier this week. Talking about how he plays with swag. He's able to be held accountable. And he's really come into his own as a leader on this team as someone who can take the constructive criticism and someone who can dish it out as well. All the quarterbacks in East Carolina are young guys. And so Reed's been in the program now his third season. So he's, he's earned his opportunity. And he is a kid that's mature. As you said, had a very successful high school career over at Millbrook in Raleigh and is now carrying it on, getting his chance to play. And so, you know, a good bit of coaching right there for Scotty. He's going to need him for the long haul. Good field position for the Aggies. Moving pocket to the right. Reynard has his pass go over the head of his intended target. And it brings up second down and 10. And T tried to run a little underneath route with Malik Wilson. Wilson, that of the long kickoff return a week ago in their win against Jacksonville State is always a deep threat. They try to find him the areas to work underneath, and then they'll take him deep eventually. And they feel like they've got a good bevy of receivers with, with Elijah Bell, who we've talked about, and also number 19, Zachary Leslie. Had a nice game last Saturday afternoon in, in Montgomery, Alabama. With yeah, three receptions. And one of them a touchdown. Cartwright is bottled up behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of one. And another third down and long upcoming for the Aggies. This offense averaged just a little over two yards per play last week. And this ECU defense is playing them well early in the first quarter. Devin Sutton came in with 68 tackles a season ago. Very active along the way. The interior of this East Carolina defense much maligned a season ago. Alex Turner also in on the play. Can they stand up near in a third down situation? Third downs last year, worst in the conference. 78 of 156. They've got to be able to get teams off the field, Josh. They've got to. Wilson in motion to the right. Raynard to throw, but a whistle and a flag before the snap. The trouble with the formation there. Henry Winberg. Speaking it over with his crew from the American Conference. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Well, those penalties will drive you crazy as a head coach. And then they have third down and about 15, 16 yards. So you have to wonder if you're a &T, do you try to play conservative, try to get what you can, or do you try to get this first down and keep things going? Anti-offense has struggled, let's say, for five quarters. Eight plays, nine yards in the first quarter so far for the Aggies. The only score that 100-yard kick, or rather pick six by Mac McCain. Will Anti Will Anti Will put some pressure on, they do. Raynard hit as he throws, jump ball left side. It's broken up by Corey Sargent in the last second, looking for Zachary Leslie. And a three and out once again for the Aggies offense. Saw pressure from the outside and tried to get it to a guy that's got some size in Leslie, the outside receiver. There's the pressure. Renard's got to get rid of this a little bit and watch the great timing there. Hands go up, get your hands in between it and knock the ball away. Two pass breaks up a season ago by Sargent. Being tested early, comes up with the big play. Check that. It was Elijah Bell, the intended target. Rivers on for his second punt. Gore sprints up to make the catch, but he muffed it. And he's able to jump on it himself at the 39-yard line. 3.13 to go in the first quarter. Take another look at Gore here. Took his eyes off at the last second, it looked like. East Carolina, last season, one of the worst teams in the conference as far as turnover margin. And, and with a young football team, a young quarterback, you don't want to make those type of mistakes. That was a, that was an error. Hey, just catch the ball, go down and make the play. Very fortunate for ECU. They're able to recover that. a &T drives on making turnovers, forcing you into a mistake. Now let's see what Heron's fourth drive, what he'll do. Trace Christian the carry on first down. 
And he's up to the 49 for a gain of five, brings up second and five. We mentioned last week this Aggies defense forced four turnovers, had a kick return for a touchdown and a blocked field goal. And that was the reason they won the game against Jacksonville State in their opener for Sam Washington's first career win. And the only score for them today, only nine yards of offense, that pick six by Mac McCain. Christian the call again on second down, and he picks up the first down into Aggie territory. Going in between the tackles, power inside running. Another good job by the offensive line there. Get the ball out there. Christian does a great job. He's a guy that can go in between the tackles very strong. Pirates hurry up. Green on the quick hitter inside the 45. And they'll mark him down at about the 42. There was a big battle for the running back position here in fall camp. Anthony Scott, as we mentioned, set out a season ago. Trace Christian, the redshirt freshman. The guy that they really looked at was Hassan Howe. He's not gotten these maybe, but the backup to the backup now. And another key to keep your eye on is Darius Penix. But they're going to try to rotate these backs, have one good back, another guy that can back him up. High throw over the middle and a great catch. No, he dropped it. Look for a moment. Like Taj Deans would it be able to come down with it. Seemed like a broken play from the get-go as Herring bobbled the snap, but that high throw, being unable to come down with it. Watch this effort by Taj Deans to go up and climb the ladder, but the defensive backs of North Carolina a we told you, they're very aggressive. And Baker comes up and says, no, no, no. Meanwhile, on the other side, Aggie quarterback, Quarterback Daryl Johnson hadn't talked about him making the play wide open Deans this time He has the first down inside the 25 A Big game there for the Pirates. They move the ball well on these first three drives with East Carolina Getting into some type of offensive rhythm and moving the ball is taking the defensive rhythm away from North Carolina a and That's the first time we've even talked about the preseason All-American Daryl Johnson putting some pressure a moment ago on here and so again East Carolina's really established their tempo. They're winning the line of scrimmage. Gain of 17. And now on first and 10 of the 25, Herring lobs it for Pro, and it's tipped in the last second. He had a step on the DB. And a great pass break up there. Sets up second down and 10. Antoine Wilder at the last second here. They run a little wheel route, a little action out there. Gets his hand on it. And Pro not able to keep the concentration. Ball deflected there. Goes right off his hands and the top of his shoulder pads, the breast pads, incomplete. Christian again lowers his shoulder and he is put down <laughs> at the 23. <laughs> Christian is running along. Gets a nice block at the point of attack and is going. And then Julius Reynolds just comes out of no place and shoulder whips him down to the ground. But another third down now. Four wide receivers, one of East Carolina's favorite sixes. Does a and try to put some pressure on, or are they going to let this quarter kind of get close to the end? Under a minute to play in the first quarter. Pirates are 2 of 5 on third down. Christian Here's in motion. Pressure. Here comes the blitz. They set up the wide receiver screen right. A lot of space inside the 15, and a touchdown saving tackle made on Terrell Green to the 10-yard line. Great recognition by Herring that time. He read the blitz, knew who the hot receiver was. It was Green. Caught him on a lazy little slant. Gets enough for the first down. Pirates driving. Christian on first and goal at the 10. And he brings it to the 8-yard line. And brings up second down and goal. Last time the Pirates were down here. Goal to go situation. Their last drive. Herring threw an interception in the back of the end zone. That was returned all the way for a touchdown by Mac McCain. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Team switch sides. It was an entertaining first 15 minutes. AC moving the ball well, but only three points to show for it. But they're on the doorstep of punching it in and taking the lead. Second and goal upcoming for the Pirates. ECU and North Carolina a and in the Pirates season opener from Greenville. Second quarter coming up next, seven to three after one. Start of the second quarter in Greenville. ECU trailing North Carolina A&T 7-3, but the Pirates knocking on the door to try and take the lead. Trace Christian on second and goal. Runs into a 
a pile of people. Bounces it out to the left and picks up maybe a yard. Brings up third down and goal. Christian likes to go inside and try to bounce it out. Daryl Johnson among a bunch of East Carolina guys that are battling in there. The Aggies comes up and makes the play. Antoine Wilder on the stop. Now what you got? You got red zone situations for ECU. And this is where they've been so successful in the past. Throwing the short pass. Five wide receivers in, so you're pretty much going to be locked in some type of man. 11th play of the drive. Herring over the middle. Touchdown, Pirates. Blake Kroll, his first career touchdown. Kroll works his way inside there. Great look again. Pressure comes a little bit late. Gets inside leverage on the defender. Little short post route. Perfect pass. Touchdown, East Carolina. Blake Prohl was expected to have a big freshman season last year, but he tore his ACL in fall camp. He's back this season fully healthy, and he's made his first couple of catches today and his first career touchdown grab. Prohl, the son of former NFL Ricky Prohl, his brother Austin in the NFL with the Bills. Conduct, offense number 55. A penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's against Garrett McGinn, the senior from Tallahassee, the only true starter on the offensive line back from last year. The team captain gets called for unsportsmanlike. So Verity on for the extra point. And the Pirates have a three-point lead early in the second quarter. You know, for ECU, it was huge that they converted and got six on that drive after their first two trips inside the red zone only resulted in three points in a turnover. Again, the time that Herring has to throw the football has got to be a concern to Sam Washington. Keep this in mind. Only one game last year did, it, did they give up two rushing touchdowns. They only gave up two passing touchdowns in any ball game else also. So not being able to put pressure on the quarterback has got to be frustrating them. And when you don't put pressure, you get nice little inside routes like Cole had to get the touchdown. And, yeah, very, very important for East Carolina this time to come away with something in the red zone. So Courtney Cord, the defensive coordinator now, and, Sam Washington, who was, they're, you know, they're going to get together and try to figure this thing out. But I, I like what I'm seeing out of the East Carolina offense right now. Smooth, a nice rhythm. And now will they be able to stand up? A&T offensively not doing very much right now. And I think that would be my biggest concern if I'm an Aggie fan. Is that, hey, we got to get some points on the board. Only 20 points total last week and not much from our offense. And today, the pick six gets us on the board. So, hey, can their offense establish something? And they, and they should get good field position here after the unsportsmanlike. Pratt has to kick from his 20. As Derek Williams fields the kick at the 17. Big hold of the 35-40. And a late flag as well. Did, did Williams cough up the football there? And now another late flag. So pushing and shoving. Like Williams hung on to it, but we're going to get two fouls off to that kickoff return. See Scotty Montgomery telling the sideline, you guys got to calm down a little bit. And the unsportsmanlike after the touchdown, and it looks like they're going to get called for Another personal foul here after the play. Scotty Montgomery in year three here in Greenville. He's renovated the facilities. He's really excited about on those. On the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team, number 18. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, pulling off of the pile, receiving team number 87. Both penalties will be enforced. First down, North Carolina A&T. Well, so it's against the Aggies, not the Pirates. Wow. So that's their seventh penalty. 
This ball was going to be at about the 42-yard line. Nice return. Get you some momentum. And they're going to start this drive inside their 20. Actually, they set it down. They're going to push it back. So that's about a 33-yard or plus penalty. They're going to start this at their 10-yard line. And these are the mistakes a week ago that, that Sam Washington talked about, the dead ball, three dead ball penalties, almost 100 yards in penalty, penalty yards. And not very smart right now by North Carolina A&T. And this is an offense that's gained just nine yards. Reynard is 0 for 5 in pass attempts. Just one first down for the Aggies offense. And they're backed up at their own 10. And a great time for East Carolina to make a defensive statement. Cartwright the carry on first down. Cuts it back in the middle. And he's down at the 14-yard line. Picks up four, brings up second and six. Bruce Bivens on the, Bruce Bivens on the tackle for the Pirates. Five on the play. Second down and five. Ball the Mark him at the 15. And so it's second and five for Rainer on the Aggie offense. Two receivers left for Rainer. And they change the play. Pirates showing pressure. They bring it. Cartwright the carry. And he's able to pick up about four yards, close to a first down. Brings up third down and short. Michael Swift on the stop. Michael Swift with the tackle. Third down and two. Trying to establish something inside. Don't want to make the mistake down here. So a moment to go earlier. Reynard only seven interceptions. A team in North Miami that doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Needs to find a way to pick up a couple of yards to get this first down. Keep the drive and keep the momentum that East Carolina's established away from them. One out of three on third down conversion so far for the Aggies. Option play left. Cartwright takes the pitch and he stops shy. What a play by the Pirates defense swarming to the football. And they force the Aggie offense into another punt. Coach Blackwell said we've got to get more aggressive. We've got to run to the football. Have hats on the ball. Three or four purple jerseys. They ran this little option play a lot last week to the short side, trying to get the defense off balance, but nowhere to go. 13 comes up and makes a solid play. Who is Mr. 13? That's DeAndre Robinson. Comes up and makes a big hit and stalls the Aggies. Now this defense, not the biggest in size, but a lot of speed on the defensive side of the football for ECU. Pirates should be getting a good field position here. A short punt. And it's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 14-20, excuse me, 11.57 to go in the first half. 10-7, Pirates on top. Do you do this often? You never make people down and drink it. You're my first one, actually. How am I doing? Whatever he's planning, it's now. God, show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. We have to chase this down. God, show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. Pleased to meet you. Reed Herring in his first career start, 13 of 23, a buck 34, a touchdown and a pick. And his Pirates are on top of the North Carolina A&T Aggies, 10-7, just under 12 minutes to go in the first half. First and 10 Pirates, hoping to build off their last touchdown drive, starting at the 42. Anthony Scott takes the delayed handoff, a big hole up the middle. He's into Aggie territory after a gain of nine, setting up second down and one. Love Anthony Scott's vision. They talk about the ability to make plays, the jump cuts. Didn't have to do that then, just power in. But running with his head up, running, looking around, trying to avoid tacklers. And now in a second down and three or four, or two or three actually, it makes the play calling so much easier for East Carolina. And for young Mr. Reed here, and he's looked very impressive so far in this football game. Pirate offense, 174 total yards to just 18 for A&T. 
They go back to Scott again. He dives forward, and he's about a half yard shy of the marker. He brings up third down and very short. Seems like four down territory, considering they went for oh, no earlier question. on their own 40. No question. And, and one thing, if you're A&T, you, you got to figure out a way to get East Carolina off the field. They have, they're turning up yards. They're dominating the time of possession. It's a very hot day. This is beginning to wear them down just a little bit. Scott for a third straight time. And look at the Aggie defense swarm to the football. I stand corrected. <laughs> I stand corrected. The Aggies aren't tired. They're going to make a play. That's Julian McKnight again, who's been all over the football. Watch McKnight, number 95, comes inside after the holdup, and he finishes the play. A nice, solid job defensively of taking away the angle is Antoine Wilder. And the big guy comes in and cleans it all up. No surprise here. Fourth and two of the Pirates offense on the field. Already one for one in these situations today. They go four wide in the shotgun for Herring. The sophomore will throw. Quick pass caught on a slide by Prohl for the first down at the Aggie 45. Having a guy that not only is a possession receiver but can understand how to get in great position. Remember, it on touchdown. He had a great inside angle for an easy pass for Heron. Dead time, he gives Heron a nice little rub, stays low, gets the ball first down, and keeps his drive going. I'll tell you what, they're going to talk a lot about Trevon Brown's big playability. But Blake Prohl is going to be a welcome addition to this East Carolina offense. Play action over the middle, and it's caught by Ferrier. He shakes off a tackle, has the first down to the 35. They talked over and over again in preseason camp about the fact that they had a lot of receivers. We've talked about Brown. We've seen Prohl. We talked a moment ago about Deans, and this time you get Farrier with a big-time play. My mistake. They were actually a yard shy, and now they pick up the first down. Terrell Green, third time they've gone with that play to him, a quick hitter. And fresh out of downs for the Pirate offense. Last season, East Carolina ran 939 plays. 543 of them plays were pass plays. Okay? Yeah, they're trying to establish a run, but passing is their bread and butter. Off his back foot, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for number 19. Line draws line, call second plate. Line's the intended target. Herring had some pressure in his face, brings up second down and 10 from the 30. Brian's got tripped up a little bit at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't come off clean. Good job a &T defense and the pressure by Herring. Herring and a flag before the snap. Flag on the play. Offside. Defense number 94. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's Justin Cates. 6'4", 6 261, senior, very good athlete. Got to watch the football. How about eight penalties now in the first half yeah. of the Aggies? Yeah. Second and five of the 25. Pitch play to the right. First carry for Hassan for Hussein Howe, and he has the first down inside the 20. The 19. First time we've seen a little option play. First time we've seen Howe in the ball game. The leading rusher for East Carolina last year. Returning rusher, 419 yards. A guy that's a durable guy. They use him out of the backfield some. He can run some good routes. Another quick pass. It's caught by Deans. He lowers his shoulder and gets through one, but a minimal gain on first down. This tempo right now, and we mentioned it a moment ago, definitely favors East Carolina. See a lot of guys from North Carolina A&T kind of slow to get back in position, hands on the hips. And one thing that they've done a really good Thank job of is taking away number 40, Daryl Johnson, out of the football game. Haven't not called his name it often. I'm bringing it up because I like <laughs> Daryl Johnson. He's a good guy, but he's not making any plays right now. Herring to the left side for Brown. The throw is low, but he adjusts and makes the play. Set up a third down and short from the 12. And Scotty Montgomery is well aware of Daryl Johnson and, and what he brings to this defense. And so far, as you've said, they've done a great job neutralizing him. McGarrett and Penn have done a nice job chipping him at times. Now 
Might want to take a look at Rolling this. Rolling on the field, a completed pass is under further review. That was Brown's fourth catch of the day. And Henry Wimberg and back in the headset. Proud of the media official review sponsor, the East Euclid Ball. As I said earlier, Reed Herring, get another look at it here. A little bit of a low throw, but Brown, talented as he is, able to go down there. And this review shouldn't take very long. It's low. Point of the ball actually kind of hits his thigh pad. Defender comes over later on and maybe draws the ball a little bit. That's Wilder, but I, I'd like to think that's a catch. Completed pass, third down at the spot of the catch. Saw Brown's family on my way to the to the stadium this afternoon. Just throw up my hand at him. There's about seven or eight of them. I knew it was the mom because she was leading the deal, head on the number 88 East Carolina jersey, a very, very proud family from down in Wilmington. And they've got reason to be. Could, could possibly move up the ranks even further and further. You mentioned Zay Jones his outstanding career as one of the outstanding receivers here at East Carolina. And you can see why. He's got the speed. You've seen him deep. He can go underneath and make catches. And I think he's going to have another breakout season on his way to 60 or more receptions. A 1,000 yards a season ago with seven touchdowns. Third down and three at the 12. Play action. Herring caught at the five by Deans and a first down. Four drives for ECU today. Four times they've been inside the red zone. Eight three on the play. Ball is going to be spotted in the six-yard line. Where Deans played at Southern Nash High School up in Spring Hope right. Bailey, North Carolina area. One of the Firebirds, having a good team. You know what great star played at Southern Nash? Who? Julius Peppers. How about that? Back in the day. Legendary pass rusher. Here's a jump ball for Brown. Incomplete. Good coverage on the play by Mac McKean. You saw just now the graphic, 17 first downs for ECU to just one for the Aggies. The matchup that I thought we'd see a lot of, both of them had their moments. McCain gets, <laughs> keeps it tight, wastes the ball, gets up there and releases that hand. But these two guys are going to battle all afternoon, Trayvon Brown and Mac McCain. Under seven minutes to go in the first half, Harris Blitz. to the end zone, caught, touchdown! DeAndre Ferrier, the junior. And the Pirates lead by nine here in the first half. Reed Herring showing me a lot this afternoon. Stays in there. He knows he's going to get hit. Here comes the pressure right up the A gap. Stays in there and throws it in a nice job of Ferrier. Getting himself open and room to catch the football and turning and grabbing it. Verity tax on the extra point, and ECU up 17-7, 6.50 to go in the first half. Reed Herring already up to 20 completions and two touchdowns in his first career start. That one to DeAndre Ferrier. Third time's a charm. This is the American Conference on ESPN. 6.50 left in the first half. ECU led by their sophomore Reed Herring. Up 17 to 7. Herring in his first career start. 20 of 32. A buck 73. Just through his second touchdown pass of the day to DeAndre Ferrier to give his team a 10-point lead. And, and you mentioned it, Stan, right before we went to break. I think the most impressive thing about Herring's first start today, he has stood tall and strong in the pocket, even with pressure in his face. Well, he's been hit a couple of times on the last few touchdown passes, but it hasn't really phased him. Receivers have done a great job running rounds, but you have to continue to give a lot of praise to this offensive line of allowing him the time that, hey, bam, I can find my receivers. And a and t finds himself in a situation that they're not really accustomed to behind by two scores. And so now, can the, the questions are real simple right now. Can the East Carolina defense hold up? Can the Aggie offense hold up? make some plays and what i mean by that is give me some first downs uh you know i don't have to have explosion plays give me a drive keep this east carolina offense off the field and you look at sam washington she's thinking about it. So, okay stan that's a good idea now how are we going to do it well sam that's not for me to answer that's for you to do and 
I'll tell everybody about it. So we'll see what the Aggies can do first down at the 25-yard line. Here we go. They've run 12 plays and only picked up 18 yards. Yeah. Reynard 0 for 5 today. He'll throw on first down, and he's 0 for 6. Still no completions for him. Brings up second and 10. And immediately as he threw the football, he looked at his hands, and you see him going to his towel. I kind of have a feeling that ball might have slipped away from him. Second down and 10. Cartwright the carry. And he's brought down shy of the 30 at about the 28, 29 yard line. It brings up the third down. Stan, is this a must score drive for AT? It's a must movement drive. Yeah, every, every time they get the ball, they got it. They need to score. You're behind. But this is a drive they've got to move. You're finding yourself down third and seven. They've only run two plays in this drive. They can't go three and out and give East Carolina the football again and let them contain the momentum. East Carolina rushes for Raynard steps up, flushed out to the right, pump fakes, and he lowers his shoulder. It'll depend on the Don't spot. Don't think he got it. Looks like they're going to mark him out a yard shy of the first down. And again, let's see if Sam Washington keeps the offense out there. They need to keep the offense on the field. This defense is gassed. Watch this. He's going to throw it. The receiver's not there. He wants to, and the receiver's covered again, so he decides at the last moment to throw the football and a big-time stick again by Robinson. And you can see he's about a half a yard short, and, and Sam Washington decides that, hey, we, you know, we're going we're gonna to kick it back to them. 17 first downs for East Carolina, just one for a and Delay of game on a kicking team. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. It's been an ugly first half. That's the ninth penalty on the Aggies. The only bright spot so far, the Mac McCain 100-yard pick six. And he had six games last year where they had eight or more penalties. The, the North Carolina Central game, they had 14, but I expect that. That's two long-time rivals that don't like each other, so it's going to be a little more hostile. But in the Gardner-Webb game and the Norfolk game, they, they had nine found ways to win both of those games. East Carolina's a better team than those two. You can't have nine penalties, two three and outs, a bad punt, and think you're going to beat the Pirates today. AC is offense rolling. They hit the field when you come back. Don't get mad at your well-liked neighbors. Get e -trade. 5.37 left in the first quarter in Greenville. ECU dominating the North Carolina a and Aggies. Josh Appel, Stan Luter with you. And Reed Herring out once again. First and 10 for the Pirates to 45. Herring with two touchdown passes today. He's 20 of 32 in the first half. And he's brought down for a loss of two on first Reed down. Herring on the quarterback keeper. Loses two yards on the play. This ECU offense outpacing the Aggies 219 to 27. And this is a week after the Aggie offense was able to muster up just a little over 100 yards. yards. Yeah. Yeah, that, well, they played a great defense in Jacksonville State. Had too many mistakes on the offensive side. Today they're finding a, a, a young quarterback that, that's been able to pick out some soft spots defensively. An offensive line that's given their quarterback some time and some outstanding receivers making plays. But the thing about it, and, and this is something we haven't talked about, a t had success two seasons ago knocking off Kent State up in Kent, Ohio. It was a quadruple overtime game. They were behind in that football game. They, lost, they played UNC Charlotte last year, another FBS team, and deep beat them. So they're still going to play hard and play confident. It would be important if they could get them off the field here. Okay, here we go. You get them off the field now, and maybe the offense can find a way to you know, get something going. So maybe this defensive stretch here. Played play a little conservative by East Carolina, and that, that's, that's okay. You don't want to make a mistake and let A&T get in. They haven't shown you anything offensively, so kick them down deep in territory, make them – Make him go 75, 80 yards. So, 15, a couple timeouts left. We'll see what the Aggies can do. Second putt of the day upcoming for John Young. That was a much needed stop. No question for this about Aggie it. Defense. No question about it. it. Seemed like for much of this first half, East Carolina has been doing whatever they've wanted to against a normally stout Sam Washington defense. Fair catch called for. 
and made at the 14 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 we'll North Carolina a and T from the 14 looking for anything something you said earlier maybe we want to see some plays from this offense so right now I think Sam Washington would take a play from this offense. First down is going to be I, I want to see what the first down call is going to be they, they haven't had success remember a moment ago Renard Ball slips out of his hands and so when you're in your find yourself in second and sevens and eights and nines you're climbing up hills very difficult against the east carolina defense is being very aggressive when you can't find anything offensively looks like they're going to go with two wide receivers here and one back reynard 0 for six just 27 yards and one first down for this aggie offense and that really surprises me they struggled last week but you thought that might be an anomaly with how good the personnel on this offense is here's cartwright again he's been the only Positive offensively for this squad. He's up to the 19-yard line for a gain of five. And Reynard and Cartwright have played together for a long time, over a decade. They've been playing together since Pee Wee, Little League football. Played together in high school, and now here they are with the Aggies, and they have both been prolific in putting up numbers in their Aggie careers. Cartwright had to wait a little bit of time to finally get his chance, though. He backed up a guy by the name of Tariq Cohen two years before he was in the NFL. Here's a tunnel screen and a first down for the Aggies. Their first first down in quite some time. Malik Wilson all the way up to the 41. Nice little safe inside zone pass play to Wilson. We know of his explosiveness. Again, that time giving him some time. Takes you outside, gets inside leverage, gets the first down. Gain of 21. The Aggies go no huddle. Great option. Raynard keeps it. He lowers his shoulder and he's into East Carolina territory. A gain of 11 and a first down for the Aggie offense. Back to back plays, back to back first downs, and they're moving for the first time. The chance today. to throw under 150 yards last week for Raynard, only into the game with 111, was the first time he had done that in his ANT quarterback and career. He's a guy that's very smart. This looks like the ANT offense that people have come to watch over the last three or four seasons. Raynard wanted to throw, but he's brought down by. Nate Harvey, his second TFL of the day, back to the 49 of A&T. It's a loss of two. We talked up about second Nate long. Harvey a minute ago earlier, making that first play. This time grabs the ankles of the quarterback, Renard, and brings him down. Harvey, not a small guy, 6'1", 225 pounds. Was that preferred walk on a couple seasons ago from nearby Nightdale, North Carolina, right up 264. He's been to Greenville before, makes a big time play. Winding down in this first half under two minutes. The Aggies have all three timeouts, down 17-7. Second and 12. Cartwright up the middle. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up third down and 10. And now you're in that third down situation once again as there's an injured Aggie on the field. And this is an offensive line that not only has been as youthful with only Ladies one returning player, but they've had some guys Hardy, nicked up. Michael Hardy, Shaw was Hardy. questionable today. That was Marquel Hardy. Limps off the field. Maybe he'll be back. But a third down situation. We got third down and 10. Third down and 10. NT finally gets some offense going. And let's see what you're going to get. Is he still going to put pressure on? Does NT run the inside game? Is this two plays to get 10 yards? Probably so. One and a half minutes to go in the first half. Third and ten at the 49. Rayner. The receiver got mugged. There's the yeah. flag. Yeah. He was looking for Elijah Bell. And that flag will give A&T a first down. Yeah, that's an easy call. Corey Sargent and Bell were pushing Pass down the field. And he kind of wraps his arm around him. Five. Penalty will be at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. If you're A&T, you want to use this entire 122. Try to get some points on the board. They'll get the first half, the second half kickoff. So you get a chance to score and then get some more points on you. Get back in the game. And East Carolina said, listen, what we've done for almost 30 minutes, we want to continue to do it for 122. Play solid defense. Put pressure on the quarterback. Snuff out the run game. They've gained more yards on this drive than they had previously in this first half. Here's Cartwright. On first down, and he picks up about three. 
Brainerd finally got his first completion of the game on that tunnel screen to Malik Wilson earlier for 21 yards. He's talk- one of seven in this first half. You were talking a moment ago about Cartwright, and he's a guy that played behind Tariq, but his yards improved each year. He set out his two seasons ago, picked up at 1,100 yards last year. The year before that was 174 because Tariq was doing it. Tariq was actually at the ball game yesterday. I'm not sure if he's here now. But had a solid at 25 career touchdowns and nearly 1,800 yards rushing. His time is now for a and Had a great year last year. Second and seven. Malik Wilson on the quick pass again. And he has nowhere to go. He's wrapped up behind the line. Marcus Holton Jr., the senior from Tallahassee, with the tackle. Paul's a little slow getting out. Floats it, and because he floats it, gives Holton all the time he needs to come up and get a host of East Carolina guys around to make the play. He comes up. Bruce Bivens, who's had a nice football game this afternoon, comes up and makes the play, and A&T wisely uses a timeout. With 29 seconds to go, it's third down and eight at the 37. What, what's the mindset got to be here for them? Do you take a shot? Because field goal range, they have to get a little bit further into ECU well, territory. Ruiz's longest is like 41 yards yeah. last season against South Carolina State. was shaky a little bit in warm-ups. I want to get a first down. I want to get a first down. 29 seconds is a long time. You can run three, maybe four plays, use the sideline, get get inside, get out, try to make some plays and, and do so. And then you, then, you, then you realize, this reassess after every play, but you use the sidelines unless something's deep with Wilson. But they got to get – all that talk we do, it ain't matter if you don't get a first down. Okay? That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, what if, what if – got to get the ball in position to score. They've not been able to stretch the field so far. They're one for five on third down. It's third and eight. We've got trips formation to the lower side of the field. You want to keep your eyes on 13, Elijah Bell. Two timeouts left for a t with 29 seconds left. And that's not going to do it. It's going to make this third down a bit tougher. Offense. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I was hoping we'd get a false start on everybody but the center there. Henry Wimberg not exactly uh, showing off a sense of, <laughs> a sense of humor there. Third down and 13. Killing you. <laughs> can't beat people make having 10 penalties in a football game. Okay? That doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you play. And how many East Carolina had? One? Two. Two. And they've been legit, and they're legit. It's not one of those things that's home cooking. This is not that. This is this is legit. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Third down and a long 13, and another flag. Did they not get the playoff for the third time? Delay of game. Offense. Wow. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's the third wow. delay of game penalty on this offense today. Not the a t football team that, that I've seen in previous years in big games like this. The well, execution, the attention to detail. So now you had a third and eight. So all that stuff about time and everything. Mute point. You're going backwards. So it turns into a third and 18 after back-to-back penalties. And if I'm East Carolina, if I'm Coach Blackwell, I'm putting pressure and keeping everything from the sideline. They set up a screen to Cartwright. Has some blockers. He's inside the 35 and has the first down. Perfect play call. The aggression of East Carolina played against themselves that time. A nice call by the A&T Aggies, a little short screen pass. Cartwright, we told you a moment ago, was a very good receiver for the Aggies. Catches the ball in space, good block there, gets away from a tackler, and gets out of bounds, so you save a timeout. Let's see what they can do for 20 seconds to go. First and 10 at the 29. 21 seconds to go in the first half. Raynard to throw. Against the four-man rush off his back foot over the middle, and he almost got Malik Wilson decapitated. Stops the clock with 16 seconds to go. You figure they're probably right at the edge of Noel Ruiz's field goal range right now. Raynard was trying to get outside, and you watch for trail 44, puts pressure there, and he's got to get that ball, and Lee leaves him in a dangerous position. A good, good aggressive hit that time by East Carolina, and those backs have come up and made plays, and that time again it was Devontae Sutton. Well, that's a good example of still being able to deliver the big hit over the middle without using the crown of your helmet for targeting. Second and ten. Down the sideline, a juggling catch along the sideline made. What a play by Elijah Bell. 
He had Sargent all over him, bobbled it as he was going to the ground and kept his foot in to the 12-yard line. It's a first down with 11 seconds left. Watch Bill come back to the football, bobbles it, and the fact that Sutton was on the ground, Sargent, I should say, maybe helped him get the football. They're going to look at this again. I think, let me see, right there. I think he's got a catch. Elijah Bell set a school record last year with 11 touchdowns, the second most receiving or receptions in school history, second most yards. He's just 47 shy of becoming the second receiver ever at ANC with a 1,000-yard season. He's the top target for Reynard, and we'll take another look here. Did he gain possession before his arm hit the out-of-bounds line? Let's see. That's possession there. Left foot in. Yeah, that's close. A catch. That's that a catch. looks like a catch. Yeah, because Sergeant, fortunately, Sergeant was on the ground, and that kind of helps him get his balance. There's a catch, and you can see that right foot is down, and I don't think he's bobbling or any movement as he's going down. I'd give it a catch. I, I think you're right with, with Sergeant. I usually body am. Right on the edge. <laughs> Humble. Uh, with, with his body kind of right along the sideline there when the foot. Hit, kept it from going out of bounds. Yeah, it's a good call. Six seconds left in this first half, and an important review here. If it's a completion, maybe time for a shot at the end zone before they send the field goal unit out there. They've got two timeouts left, so even if you know worst case scenario, everything depends. Sack, on, everything depends on the play. Right. Everything depends on the play. I, I tell you what, I like though. Let, let's take one more look at this, Josh, and just taking real time. Bam, bam, it's a bang, bang play. I think it's a catch. But to answer your question, I think catch, feet in, control down the ground. I think you've got to, if you can get a back outside, if you can swing cart right out, the problem is and how long is it going to take him to get out and get the ball, maybe get out of bounds. So, yeah, I think you check all your receivers, especially Elijah Bell. Try to send him on post, post corners. Get the ball there. It's got to be a quick play. You can't mess around with this and then try to get Ruiz in to kick the field goal. And if you're East Carolina, you're protecting side and definitely protecting down the middle. Make them throw a pass, and that would be the last play of the, of the of the first half. So a little, little cat and mouth game here. There you see Bell's numbers from last year. Yeah, you're interested. Bell, two years ago, was the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year. And, they like him because he's got the, what do they call it? They said they've got the size. Let me see if I got this right, what Sam said. He's got the size of a linebacker, and he's got the wide receiver. He's got the speed of a wide receiver at back. So that's a dangerous combination for Elijah Bell. After review, the receiver caught the ball and was out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 12 seconds. The clock will start on the snap. Now they definitely have time. Oh, yeah, no question. No question about it. And, and you've got to understand that if you're A&T, be ready to run a play. You've got a timeout. You've got two timeouts. So Aggie's very impressive drive so far. Got to get something on the board. 92 yards in this quarter for the Aggies. This is far and away their best drive after just nine total yards in the first quarter. Bill at the lower portion of your screen matched up against Sargent. Reynard to the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown. Zachary Leslie, his second touchdown grab of the year. And the Aggies are right back in it, down by a score right at the end of the first half. Elijah Bell gets so much attention because of his record-setting career last year, but they really like the sophomore Leslie. He's got good size at 6'3" very good hands throws the ball as we said to the post to the corner if you can't get it nobody else will as he goes up wins the one-on-one -on -one battle touchdown a and t it goes back to that third and 18 screen play to cartwright after back-to-back -back penalties a false start and a delay of game and it seemed like the aggies were going to go into halftime with just a demoralizing finish to their two-minute drill as you get another look at the touchdown, but they convert on nice, the third and long. Nice timing there. Gets the pressure. Just goes up and throws it over to the defender. Not a lot you can do. It's well defended by McDonald, but he goes about 5'8". And Leslie, as we mentioned a moment ago, 6'3". Throw it where the receiver is the only person that can get the football. The defender's got not much of a chance. 
A&T, as are people from Greensboro and all every which way. Aggie pride, Aggie pride is what they're saying. Well, maybe not right now. They're hot, but that's what they're thinking. <laughs> and look, give credit to every single fan that's at the stadium tonight. They all sat through two separate weather delays last night. And they're all out here today on a hot Sunday afternoon. And they've been treated to a great first half. Competitive, for the most part, EC was dominated. But right now, you said at the beginning of that drive for A&T, a score before the half, they get the ball to start the third quarter. All the momentum, Uncle Mo on the side of A&T. There's Sean Gibbs, run game coordinator in the black shirt, was a big time scar. A lot of these guys from A&T have got ties to Grambling and North Carolina Central with Rod Broadway. Courtney Cord was a big time defensive lineman in, in North Carolina Central. He and Sean Gibbs, one of the outstanding running backs there. Sam was there, then went down to Grambling with Rod, and then went to A&T. And, and everywhere they've been, they've won. They've had some success. And, and a &T fans want to continue that. They squib it with six seconds to go in the half. It's picked up at the 18-yard line. And that'll do it for the first half as Kennedy takes it out to 25. An entertaining first half. Impressive stuff from the first-time starter, Reed Herring, for ECU. And the Aggie offense getting back to what we're used to seeing from North Carolina A&T in their two-minute drill for that score right before the half. 17-14 your score after two quarters. ECU on top in the opener. Back to Greenville in just a moment. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. 17-14 ECU on top of North Carolina A&T. And week one of college football has already brought us the passion, the pageantry, and everything else you love about this great game. And we're certainly expecting more the rest of the season. Yep. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report here in Greenville. Josh Appel, Stan Luter with you. And at the break, 17-14 ECU on top of North Carolina A&T in a game that's mostly been dominated by ECU, but North Carolina A&T right before the half, an impressive touchdown drive to get back within three. Yeah, it was a huge drive if you're an A&T fan. Offensively, been very ineffective. Too many penalties, not moving the ball, get something to the board. They feel like they're, they're getting the game under control. But you got to give all the love to East Carolina right now. Offensively, hearing, finding his receivers, offensive line's done a great job. But i got to give a hand to the East Carolina defense. They've been maligned for a year and a half, maybe even two, of giving up too many big plays and too many points. So far, so good by the Pirate defense. They made the big plays. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Well, when you look at this, one of the things you notice is there's a lot of time for a quarterback here to find his receivers over the top. Nice little swing pass. Brown gets the ball in good places there. Watch this inside release there. A good catch. Cole, his first career touchdown of East Carolina. Again, moving the football inside and outside. Farrier on this drive. Come back or in the end zone. And right now, you're thinking this is all East Carolina. That's right. Wind it up. Wind it up. Pirates are moving. North Carolina A&T has been bitten by the bad break bug. The first possession, the first couple of plays, you get a couple of hits there by Wilson. Watch this drive there. That's the play that the Aggies are talking about. They've seen it before. Mac McCain with the 20, number 29, takes it 100 yards to the house. He's done it just before halftime. Cartwright on the swing pass. Big play here. Great catch inside concentration by Bale. And then right there, just for the half, 50-50 ball goes up. Who gets the ball? Zachary Leslie. There you go. At one point, the first downs were 17-1 to in favor of ECU, but that last drive for a and really helped them up that total yardage up. More from Greenville at halftime coming up next. 17-14 Pirates at the break. Singular plays each, each week can really make a huge impact on how things shake out towards the end of the season. You can vote online for your favorite plays as we lead up each week for the college football playoff. 17-14 your score in Greenville at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. More coming after this.
I think heroic deeds were all conceived in the open air. I think whatever I shall meet on the road, I shall like. And whoever beholds me, shall like me. I think whoever I see must be happy. Dr. Pepper. Breathe, breathe, and it's a fan. That's a tech fan. Really, what's happening? Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. God, you don't have to fall. About to get the second half underway in Greenville at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. A, a dominating first half for East Carolina right up until the end. And a great four minute drive at the end by Sam Washington's group. Scoring with six seconds to go in the half. Pulling within three. They get the ball to start the second half. Josh Appel, Stan Luter with you. Stan, in Sam Washington's second game, he faces a ranked team last week in Jacksonville State. Gets his first career win. Then the next week goes on the road again to face an FBS opponent looking for the third straight season with a win over an FBS team. And his team is in great position here to start the third quarter to take that lead. Well, they knew it. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're not shocked by this. And as I mentioned, it was important to score. They were down in the other two big games they played like this two seasons ago. Kent State, they won, found a way to win in quadruple overtime. They knocked off UNC Charlotte. But something that, that stands out to me on the stat line, a and run 26 offensive plays for 113, and we'll give you more stats in a minute. But East Carolina, 50 plays. Why is that important? It's getting hotter. It's getting later in the afternoon. The East Carolina offensive line averages about 300 pounds per man. The defensive front of a and about 260. I say that because you become to wear them down. And Reed Herons had a lot of time to throw the football. Just something to keep in the back of your man, the mind, those of you that are watching it on. Sam Washington told us earlier this week he's not as much concerned about the talent disparity necessarily because there's not really a wide gap, more just physically the difference there with the big beefy guys up front for ECU. And depth obviously an issue for both sides comparatively. you got a difference of 20 scholarships from one side to the other. So it'll be first and 10 for North Carolina A&T to start the third quarter starting at the 25-yard line, hoping to build off that drive at the end of the first half. Lamar Raynard in this offense, a good finish. Raynard 5 of 12 in the first half, 67 yards, a touchdown, and no turnovers. Cartwright, 10 carries, 33 yards, but that big third down and 18 first down on that two-minute drive at the end of the first half. Maybe the biggest play for this offense besides the touchdown. And an official's timeout before we start the first drive of the third quarter. Got a kink in the link of the chain. Oh, I like that. That's what it was. <laughs> Here we go. Great job by the headlinesman to uh, make sure that chain link was unhooked. Comes down to a game of inches sometimes. That chain link could be the difference. You never know. Well, Lake Wilson in motion. Play action to Cartwright, quick pass to the left. It's hauled in, breaking off a tackle and getting close to the first down marker. Elijah Bell, gain of nine, brings up second and short. I like that on first down look, short pass, try to establish some type of rhythm with Elijah Bell, made a big play just before the half. Get Raynard comfortable. Like you said, very few mistakes as far as interceptions, only seven the season to go. It's not going to turn the ball over, but you got to get an offensive balance right now. a and running pass. Another quick pass, this one to Wilson. Has the first down, tiptoeing the sideline. And they mark him out shy of the 40 at the 39. Maybe speaking too soon, but just worth no, just something for you people to think about. AT does a really good job. They always have of making adjustments first half to second half. You notice there's a quicker pace, trying to get your backs and wide receivers into play. Wilson, the speedster, gets the first down, trying to get this AT tempo on offense. First and 10 from the 40. 
The handoff, left side, and it's blown up again. Another tackle for loss. Jermaine Martin, his first carry of the day. Transfer from Coastal Carolina. The redshirt sophomore loses a couple. Brings up second down and long. They like Martin. He's got some speed, power, the transfer kid. But a good job of blowing that play up by Alex Turner. Futrell along with Harvey. Harvey's had a solid football game this afternoon, making some plays. And now you face a second and long yardage for North Carolina a and Second and 13, make it 12 officially. Wilson takes the screen, puts on the brakes, bounces it back outside of the 40, and he's brought down at the 42. A lot of effort there for a gain of four, brings up third down. This is just the second game that offensive coordinator Chris Barnett's calling plays. It's his first year as the OC as we take another look. But you can see the speed of Wilson. Crawford's going to come up and make a big play in the open field. But, again, going across the field of grain, wasn't quite sure that knee went down. The officials call him down, but now another third down situation in a and two of five, two of six on third downs in the first half. Need to convert to keep things going. You mentioned the adjustments for this offense in the second half. Let's see what Chris Barnett, the 33-year-old play caller, dials up here. Third down and eight. Reynard takes a huge hit, and his pass is incomplete. Intended for Ron Hunt. Broken up by Michael Witherspoon. Paul had to travel a long distance. And Witherspoon did a good job in being disciplined. Made the initial chuck, stayed low, got a hand in the passing lane. And the Pirates, as we said in the open, as we said at halftime, a much maligned defense the past few seasons. Stand their first test. Colby Gore back deep to receive. Michael Rivers on the punt. A chance to return from the 25, bouncing it to the outside, and out of bounds at the 37. Actually, Trayvon Brown on the return. Remember, Colby Gore muffed a punt earlier, and so Brown gets the opportunity there. 12-23 to go in the third. 17-14, ECU on top. Coming on offense for the first time in the second half. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. 12-23 to go in the third quarter. It's been a tight one. 17-14, ECU on top, looking to avoid a loss to an FCS team in the home opener for the second consecutive year. North Carolina A&T certainly formidable. The defending HBCU national champions went undefeated a year ago. 13 straight wins. Here's Reed Herring. And off target for Trayvon Brown, who is open on the out route in midfield. Brings up second and ten. Since night, since 2013, A&T, Appalachian State, who <laughs> scared the bejesus out of Penn State yesterday, was making their transition. Since that football game, which A&T won, A&T's 47-11. Playing against MEAC competition and playing up. So what the, what the point I'm making is that this is a football program that is a program. And they are ready for this challenge of East Carolina. East Carolina is going to have to make their plays. Strong throw for a first down to Terrell Green into a and territory to the 48. Wow. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Shane Card. Kind of slings the ball very confident in the way he throws the football. East Carolina may have found something to read here. And you can see why the staff is excited about him. I mentioned it earlier. He's the first, quote-unquote, homegrown quarterback to start for ECU since Cardin in 2012. Been all transfers since then. Play action. Again to the outside. It's caught by Blake Prohl. He turns it upfield and has the first down to the 37. A gain of 11. Blake Prohl runs an excellent little sticks route. Gets to the sticks and then comes back to make the play. So many times guys will run that route and will run it short. You tackle a yard or two behind what you need for the first down. He took it to the sticks and then came back. Had plenty of room for the first down. Looking Prohl's direction again. And the redshirt freshman hauls it into the 32. And about five or six brings up second and manageable. One-on-one -on -one matchup this time against McCain. McCain had that 100-yard pick six in the first quarter. 
for the first Aggie touchdown. Second and five. They give to Scott, and he's forward. He's got I think that ball might have come loose, but are they going to roll him down or that ECU recovered it? No signal yet. And I think ECU say, recovered it. Yeah, he did, and so Price is averted there. Brings up third down and three from the third. see at the bottom of that pile. There's a lot of stuff that goes on at the bottom of the pile. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some way, somehow, Spellsey gets it. But here he's trying to face with a third down. Five of ten on third down this afternoon. Play action. Herring hit as he throws, and he got hit. And that's the reason the throw was off target. Pressure from Antoine Wilder. One down. Antoine Wilder, one of many guys that have transferred in this program from big-time programs. That's why I was telling everybody as we talked about this game, a t wasn't going to be afraid of East Carolina because they've had guys that have played big-time football. Wilder played at South Carolina, was an academic all-SEC performer, and another pin lay on a and I think. That's a free first down. Is this a free touchdown? No, just out of the reach of Trayvon Brown, but that's one way to convert on fourth and three. Get the defense to jump, and it'll be the 12th penalty of the day for A&T. Staggered the count by hearing. Offense knows the numbers. Defense got to watch the football. They're a little too aggressive. Now, this night, Mike Mac McCain, we told you, he's got an interception for a return for a touchdown, 100 yards. Well, he is lineage. His grandfather was Franklin McCain, one of the famous Greensboro Four back in 1960, February 1st. The demonstration to sit in at the Wilworth Department Store, David Richmond, Jabril Kazan, J Joseph McNeil, and, of course, his grandfather, Franklin McNeil, to finish with this play. They go with some trickeration and two late flags flying. 13 penalties now, is that what it was? Yeah, Jawan Moody either got his face mask grabbed or thrown out of bounds a little bit too late. But Frank McCain was one of the very people who were very instrumental in that sit-in that started and hinted off the civil rights movement at the Woolworth store. They've made that a depart that department store is now a museum there in Greensboro. But Mac has decided, hey, he wants to make his own niche. He's very, very proud of his grandfather and all he's done. And you saw a moment ago the statue there. There's a great job, guys. The statue of the Greensboro Four, Kane and McNeil and Richmond. That's that's Frank and, second and, from yeah, the left. Second from the left is Eckling Son. And every home football game, the Aggies walk past the monument, touch it, say a prayer, representing North Carolina A&T. Throw to the end zone. Moody gets contacted, Flag. and there's the 13th penalty. Make it the 14th penalty of the day. It's going to put the ball at the two-yard line. So over 100 yards in penalties. Let's take a look here. Coming right at you. And you can, I think the left hand may have gotten in. We'll get a better look right here. Great job, guy. Yeah. It's a little too aggressive by no, by the defender for North Carolina a &T and Reams gets caught. What's that? Over 100 yards in penalties now, right? Yeah, that'll put him at about 115. 14 penalties, and now it's first and goal at the two. Fade, Brown, tipped, incomplete. Second and goal upcoming. There you see the penalty disparity. 14 for 113 yards for A&T. ECU discipline, 2 for 25. Take another look and at that. And starting the half, A&T had 113 yards in total offense. And there's that matchup again. McCain versus Brown. And McCain won that battle. Christian the handoff. And he Fumble. lost the football. It's picked up by A&T at the 5. Second time, ECU has turned it over in the red zone. This a &T defense doing what they do best, creating its second turnover of the afternoon. Sam Blue is going to be the one to recover this football, but watch the hit right there. That's the big play. McKnight gets the hit. Ball pops out. Watch this right here. Bam. And then there's Blue with the recovery. And we talked about North Carolina a t being one of the top teams in the country a season ago in turnover margin picking up where they left off their second course turnover in the afternoon. I'll tell you what, that handoff looked a bit awkward, too. Yeah, it did. And that might have been the reason that Christian never really got a good handle on it. One more look. 
And there you see it. He puts it almost in the armpit. Got it in his armpit, exactly. But that hit had a lot to do with it, too. Absolutely. So Rayner in this offense. The handoff up the middle to Cartwright. And he's up to the nine-yard line for a gain of four. Remember, so now we have another offensive lineman down for a and And it's the second time today, McQuell Hardy. I was about to mention that, you know, for Lamar Raynard, 27 career starts coming in at today, 27 victories. And so he's in jeopardy. Still obviously early in the third quarter, but his team behind. They've got some work to do if he wants to make it a perfect 28-0 as a starter. And as, and as Hardy gets tended to down inside the five, we'll take a timeout. Hopefully he's all right. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter, 17-14 ECU. In and download now. Back in Greenville, 17-14 ECU on top. Starting left guard for North Carolina a and the senior, McQuell Hardy. Went down with an injury. He was helped off the field, and he was taken right to the locker room. We certainly hope that he's going to be okay, but it did not look good. And so at left guard, Sylvester Smith, the redshirt junior, comes in for second down and six from the nine after ECU fumbled inside the 10-yard line. Their second red zone turnover today. Rainer in the shotgun. He's 8 of 16 for 86 yards today. Quick throw to Wilson on the near side, and the screen is blown up by Michael Witherspoon. And that sets up a third down and about seven after the loss of one. Witherspoon refused to be blocked on this little flanker screen. Watch this wide receiver area. Defeats the block by Bale and comes up and makes the big play. And, and you talked a moment ago about the fact that you've got a lineman down at AT. The new offensive line, Shaw's been nicked up. So East Carolina now trying to put more and more pressure on this young offensive front. AT 2 of 7 on third down. Raynard steps up. He's hit. He's set. Flag down in the backfield. We'll check on it. But for now, it's a sack for the Pirates and a third down stop. Under pressure again, Nate Harvey just defeats the block, won't be blocked, comes up and makes the play. Flag a hold against North Carolina a and Obviously, East Carolina is going to defl- decline that. So that turnover in the red zone a moment ago by Christian doesn't come back to haunt the Pirates. Good defensive stand by ECU. What kind of differences do you notice from last year to this year under new defensive coordinator David Blackwell? Aggressiveness, aggressiveness, gang tackle, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. One of the things that they did was they simplified the system a little bit. They're communicating a lot better than they once did, at least what you hear from practice and when you've been able to watch things. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Look at where Trayvon Brown is waiting for this kick. He has to backpedal to midfield to make the catch. Gets a block inside the 45 and then out of bounds at the a and 40. And another thing you're asking about what they're doing defensively, it's like you've seen with this entire East Carolina football team. There's more speed. Scotty Montgomery said, I've got to go out and recruit and get faster players to match what we see in the AAC along what they see on non-conference games. And you take a look right there. They're making plays inside Harvey, who's been all over the football Gang tackling, three, four, five purple shirts. Harvey again coming inside from trails making plays. They're inside, they're outside. They're very active, and when they're active, they're aggressive, and when they're active and aggressive, they're confident. Reed Herring, the sophomore, in his first career start, hands off to Anthony Scott. A flag flies in after the gain of two. Anthony Scott on the carry, flag on the play. By the way, that holding call against a and would have been their 15th penalty, but it was declined. This is holding against ECU. Our referee, Henry Wimberg's mic, is clearly not working. His battery is shot as much as he's been on it today. And I guess you got to keep on trucking. Every time you got to announce it, make sure you hit that switch. Maybe that one time, that next time will be the time that it works. So it backs East Carolina up 10 yards. Back to the 47, sets up first and 20. Reed Herring, the sophomore, 25 out of 40, 210 yards, couple of touchdowns, an interception. This offense has moved the ball well. He's throwing it around the field all over the place to six different targets. Eight twenty-three to go in the third quarter, 17-14, Pirates on top. 
Herring with time, rifles over the middle, and he has Ferrier up the seam. A&C thinks it was incomplete, and ECU going to hurry up to try and snap before there's a chance for a review. Excellent pass and catch by Herring and Ferrier. Finding that area that's open, gets there, gets the catch, goes down. They're going to try to review this. Wow, that was very close. I'm surprised they didn't let ECU get the snap off. And they are going to take a look at it. The throw was low. Ferrier was open. We'll take a look. Nice protection hat on a hat for East Carolina. Ball's low. Can't tell From there. that angle, I think it's a catch because he's going to get his hands underneath. Here's a better angle. I think that's a catch. Let's see if we can get one more look Let's at see it. When from he that throws thing. over, the ball yeah. gets between his legs, but is the ball, does the ball, is there any grass? We've had look at the, <laughs> we've had quite a few lengthy reviews today, and this also gives uh, Henry Wimber a couple of minutes to maybe get his uh, mic checked out. But if we could take one more look at that last angle, I think that ball might have jarred free and hit the ground. And Ferrier trapped it here. We'll take another look. Watch it in slow motion. Watch that ball after it goes through his arms. There. Ball on the ground, right by his knee. We'll see. As it stands now, it's a gain of 25. Man, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to call a football game. Is that possession? There's a knee down. Catch, no catch. I think it was good for, for North Carolina A&T to be able to, to, to get this. Slow down. He gives us a chance to talk. Courtney Cord, who's now the, the defensive coordinator, even though Sam spends a lot of his time in the defensive meeting room, it gives these guys a chance. To, okay, let's let's get ourselves together, and it also gives East Carolina an opportunity to kind of get their, their you know, their inside 25 yard, the blue zone, as some will call it, before you get to the red zone. Get your offense together, and, and try to make a big play. It's turning into another lengthy review. ECU has been in the red zone five times today. And here's Henry Wimberg, hopefully, with a working microphone. Wow. They go inconclusive, not enough to overturn it. I thought from the angle we had that second time, might have hit the ground, but nonetheless, it's a gain of 25 and a first down for ECU. Herring's 26th completion of the day. Ferrier already has a touchdown grab. That was his fifth catch there. Right outside the red zone, first and 10 at the 22. Prohl, Ferrier, and Brown lined up all to the left. Blitz coming, slant over the middle. Green makes a contested catch inside the 20 to the 18. Gain of four, on the play. Gain of second, four second, second and six. Of the line of the Aggies. Keith Gaither, the wide receivers coach, has done a really good job of emphasizing being precise on routes. And you could see that there, just kind of a quick step drop. Ooh. Daryl Johnson trying to get a little rush, trying to make something happen. Go, Not sure they, if he was yeah. influenced or not. Oh, uh, yeah. Henry Wimberg's mic worked right at the very end. He called a false start there. Snap backs EC up, ECU up three, uh, five yards, I should say. Brings up second down and 11. We were talking about Gaither a second ago. They run very sharp routes. You saw that a moment ago, and they're going to have success with a three-wide formation. There you go. Here's Prohl inside the 20, and he's back to where they just were. He gets the penalty yardage back to the 18-yard line, third got, down and six. You've got Brown who can take the top off the defense, and then you've got guys like Ferrier and, and even Moody and Deans that do a really nice job of running routes. And then you've got a guy that's a great possession receiver that reads defenders well and pro. A lot of offensive weapons for the East Carolina Pirates. 
ECU 5 for 11 on third down. A&T brings pressure. The throw to Brown on the comeback route is incomplete. Sails out of bounds. And Jake Faraday will come on with the rest of the field goal unit to try and tack on three to this three-point lead. And if Herring had just a moment's more time, Prohl was opening the flat, doing a little crossing route, going across the top of the screen. But again, this matchup all afternoon, Brown and McCain, and I guess McCain won that battle because Brown didn't make the catch. You can like to see two fine athletes going battle on battle. Verity from 36 yards. And it's good. ECU on top now by six. 20 to 14 your score with 6.39 to go in the third quarter. Back to Greenville after this. Garcia versus Porter, Saturday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Showtime. 6.39 to go in the third quarter. ECU on top of North Carolina A&T, 20 to 14 after a Jake Verity 35-yard field goal. Josh Appel, Stan Luter with you from Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. A&T about to get the ball back. They've kept it close. They were down by as many as 10 in the first half. Malik Wilson will take a knee, and it'll be first and 10 for A&T at the 25. Still a lot of football left to be played. And if you're North Carolina A&T, although you haven't had a lot of offensive success, there's still enough time. Try to establish a ground game. Get something on first down. They've not had a lot of success on first 10 situations. And we, we talked about Markel Cartwright. And, and his value to this football team. And this would be a great situation, I think, to try to establish something in between the tackles, get him outside, try to get Cartwright rolling. It'll make it a lot easier throwing the football, I think, for Lamar Renard. Remember, A&T has a backup guard in there right now, and they go to Cartwright on first down, trying to run off that left side. He's only able to muster up one yard. Coming up to make the stop defensively, Ray Tillman, the backup middle linebacker. Well, the problem with that, if you can't run the ball, the reason why is Tillman and his guys are saying, hey, look, you want to run it? We're not going to let you run it. Charles also in there on the tackle. Daniel Charles, a kid from Marietta, Georgia, a redshirt freshman. They're, they're really excited. One of the things when you talk to people around Greenville about these guys, they say, okay, we don't know what our defense is going to do, but we're really excited about what their potential can be. Second and nine, Wilson in motion. Play action to Cartwright, and a pitch and catch for a first down for a &T. It's Elijah Bell on the catch, his third of the day. He's been mostly quiet. He's got three catches for 36 yards. Didn't have a huge game. He's been banged up a little bit in fall camp, a little back shoulder fade. You don't make the tackle. He can get more yards, gets that first down. Bell. Seven games last year. We had over five receptions, three so far on this afternoon. Think they're going to go to him a few more times before we end. Another quick pass. This one low and incomplete. Looking for Bell again. Bell Brings up second and, second and ten. A&T with 141 total yards of offense. Just nine first downs. A little bit inconsistent on this side of the football today. Well, the last two ball games they really yeah, have. That's they, true, they, yeah. really, they really have. And, 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 and the snap. You know, it was a little bit of a lazy snap out of the shotgun. Got to get that ball. That's better. Cartwright up the middle. Check that. That's Jermaine Martin. And Martin picks up three. The one unit. Martin played at Coastal Carolina, rushed for nearly 200 yards, had a couple of touchdowns, and they value the fact that he can be that added boost in the backfield for North Carolina a &T. Get him in for a run. Now a and faced with yet another third down situation. East Carolina's done a really good job of getting off the field when faced with third and long situations today. Two for eight on third down. Raynard takes the snap. The corner blitz coming. Picked up nicely. Throw over the middle is almost intercepted. Devin Sutton almost had a pick. Instead, it falls harmlessly to the turf. 
And a and is forced to punt once again. Right Out of the rhythm again is Le- Lamar Renard, and this ball is behind the intended receiver. If it's on point, that's going to be six for the Pirates. Timing's just been off in the wide receiver game the last two football games. Zachary Leslie just couldn't get his hands on the ball. Unfortunately for A&T, that's not picked. Here's Rivers to punt. Brown from the 25. And he scoots past the 30 to the 31. And that is where the ECU offense takes back over, leading by six with four and a half to go in the third quarter. Sam, we mentioned a little bit earlier, how much of this inconsistency on offense do you think has to do with a first-time play caller and an offensive line that's still trying to gel? Offensive line to a point, yes. Uh, Good defenses. (laughs) The <laughs> good people make you do some things you don't only want to do. I think you've got to you've got to get a rhythm. And when you're faced with some second and third and long yardage, you can eliminate sometimes the play call. The defense is out there making some plays. A and T will get it together. They, they, they're not matched up to play with the speed of the game yet. And yeah, that offensive line being young, but that's not an excuse. First and ten, Herring the delayed handoff to Scott around the right side. Anthony Scott on the carry. He's up to the 33 for a gain of two. Matt McCain on the stop. Gain of Mac McCain on the tackle. Second He's been a force eight. as expected That's on defense. That pick line. six earlier. Both of these defenses, in one case, I think East Toronto's defense has played maybe a little better than people may have anticipated. And A&T is pretty much done. With they, they're gathered around the football. They're making it difficult for A&T, but still too much time to throw the ball if you're hearing. And guess what? <laughs> There's laundry on the field. Shocking. This might go against ECU. Field, offense, number 11. Five yard penalty, second down. Prol must have been covered up when they lined up because he gets called for an eligible man downfield. He field. was. Roll with a touchdown catch today in his first career collegiate game. That's all of last year with an ACL injury. Roll the leading receiver today for the Pirates. Seven catches, 55 yards. So second and 13. Four-man rush. Herring flushed out to the right. And he dumps it away. Third down and long upcoming. Just kind of wondering how much A&T was going to try to dial up some more pressure. Julian McKnight, who called his name a few times, was injured a lot of the season, was on the all-conference team two years ago in the MEAC, and, and, and they really need to get him to put pressure on the quarterback up front. He, along with Cates, moves here and there on third down. Third and long. Herring pressured, and he hit, and he goes down. Back at the 23. It's been a long time coming, but there he is, the man, Daryl Johnson, the preseason all-conference pick. Put the pressure on the quarterback last week to force the fumble. Six sacks on the season last year. Gets his first of the afternoon. Really haven't called his name a lot. Love Daryl Johnson. He said to me, every time I put on a uniform, I want to play as hard as I can for North Carolina A&T. So A&T took a chance on him when no one else would down there. Because actually was a football and basketball player down there. But he said he loves being at A&T, and he wanted to do everything he could to make his family proud and make the blue and gold proud. He had a great year last year. They're happy now with that sack. Punt almost blocked, and that's another flag. There we go. Might be a first down, depending on whether or not that's roughing or running into And the punter for ECU, John Young, the transfer from West Virginia, slow to get up. It's a big call here. Wow. Young only came in this year and only kicked twice in his career at West Virginia. And I was watching the blocking in the downfield, didn't see if it was running or roughing. So, like you said, we'll wait to see what this call is. and It could be big. Still waiting to hear from Henry Wimberg as they tend to John Young. It's the third straight year ECU has gone with a transfer punter. And Young up on his feet, walking off under his own power, which is a great sign. Running into the kicker, 
defense number 20. The penalty is declined. First down. So it's running into the kicker, so no first down. And now we get a look at ECU's new facility, something that Scotty Montgomery was raving to us about on our call. And he said it helps so much in recruiting. Guys oh, yeah. are going through better nutrition. They're in much better shape heading into camp. And it's all thanks to these new facilities, a $50 million upgrade. And they're making renovations here to the press box, as we well know, and throughout the facility, the Murphy Center to our to our end zone left and the ward building. They put a basketball practice facility in. The boneyard up here, but this $50 million investment in East Carolina football trying to take them to the next level in the AAC, and it is definitely paying dividends. This is a better team I see on the field today than I saw at the end of last year against Memphis. The days of black plastic ice baths after practice <laughs> outside are over. They've got hot tubs and cold tubs in the Murphy Center, and this Scotty Montgomery staff near the top of the American every year in recruiting, and that facility is only going to help. Great campus, great team, great school. Hey, why not? Pressure again. Raynard able to stay out of it, but he's up to the 40 for a gain of only two. A nasty hit on one of the linemen, but thankfully he's able to get up. Devon Sutton on the stop. He rolls up on Cortez hearing. Snap there. Run for your life. Sutton comes up, makes the play, and Jordan Johnson, who's the backup to Pina. Gets rolled up and take keep to look at him as the right guard spot for e for ANT. Thank God for that right knee brace. New QB in the game. Now they like Khalil Carter. He likes to run the football. And they hand it off to Cartwright here. Big haul in the middle. Cartwright breaks free. Deep inside ECU territory, inside the 30, stumbling down to the 27. Scouting report says Khalil Carter will come in and primarily be a runner. East Carolina may have let up thinking he was going to run the ball, kept your eye off him, and Cartwright, his best run of the day, will jet sweep action, confuses the linebackers, and right up the gut. Good job on the offensive line for AT to find the hole. And finally, we see the Markel Cartwright that everybody's been expecting to see for AT. Gain of 32. A&T trying to take the lead on this drive. Carter keeps it around the right side inside the 20, and he's out of bounds at the 18. Nice play call in there. Again, we talked about the scouting report. Everybody knows most of the time when Carter's in the ball game, he's going to run the football. He only threw nine passes a season ago. Ran the ball a couple of times last week against Jack State, Jacksonville State. This time fakes it, gives it to Carwright, big gainer. Next time he keeps it. Second down and short from the 18. How will the Pirate defense respond? First time we've seen Carter in the game on this drive. He fakes the jet sweep, takes it up the middle, and he lunges forward for the first Little down to the 16. Picks up three yards on the play. Devondre Robinson on the stop. Quicker first tempo the you notice now by it's North Carolina a and It's one of their better drives of the day. Knocking on the door to try and take the lead. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Marcus Pettiford, number 73, the left tackle, was moved over from the right spot to replace Brandon Parker, the Oakland Raiders draft pick. He'll lead this offensive line here along with Hardy. Carter still in there. Play action, looking, dumps it, and it's caught inside the 10 and tiptoeing the sideline, <laughs> Elijah Bell. Nifty little play there off play action. Get inside the 10. Inside release, try to take him underneath. Took away the deep route, the bells, I mean, to uh, to Leslie. Smart, smart, doesn't make a mistake, gets the ball inside. Get as much as you possibly can, get out of bounds. Keeps his drive going. But showing East Carolina a little more dimension in their offense, a lot more movement. Two wide receivers at the top of the screen now for North Carolina a &T. Should be the last play of the third quarter. Comes the blitz. Cartwright the carry off the right side, and he's brought down for a short gain, if anything. And that brings us to the end of the third. Put those fours up. 20 to 14, ECU on top of North Carolina A&T, but the Aggies are right on the doorstep, facing a third and short, down by six when you come back. Garcia versus Porter, Saturday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on Showtime.
15 minutes to play in Greenville. Start of the fourth quarter, and we've got a tight one. Khalil Carter in the game, facing a third down and short from inside the ECU 10. Aggies trying to take the lead. Carter keeps it, and he's tripped up at the five. It's close to a first down, and he got it. First and goal upcoming after the third down conversion for the backup quarterback who's been in on the majority of this drive. A&T was 2-2 two two in red zone last week. Last season, 38 touchdowns in the red zone. They score when they get down here. They've had an opportunity early, didn't get, didn't convert inside the 30. They've got to be able to score. East Carolina takes the timeout. Scotty Montgomery in, in, understands the importance of this possession. ECU, first for the half. So the Pirates burn in their first timeout for this first and goal play. And ECU up by six. The Pirates last year. Same game, first of the year to open the season here at home. They faced defending FCS champion James Madison and fell 34-14. They're hoping for a different result today. They're clinging to a six-point lead after a 3-9 and nine season last year, back-to-back 3-9 and nine seasons. Averaged almost 25 points a game. The defense was the real issue last year. Those boys have come to play today. A, little, a few missed opportunities. You yeah. look back in the red zone, the only two times ECU hasn't converted, two turnovers, interception and a fumble inside the five. And if they score on one or two of those drives, we're looking at a completely different game right now. Instead, a t has an opportunity to take the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Take a look at what Scotty Montgomery, only the six wins. It feels like he's got the program in a place where he'd like to have it. Starts with their defense now getting better. Time out a moment ago by ECU. Now we got a little confusion here. Let's see if he got the first down. Carter got tripped up. They spotted it at the five. He needed about the five and a half for the first. And we have yet another replay review. Henry Wimberg back on the headset to talk with our replay official, Matt Aloiso. This is big here. Now, if it's fourth and short, if and you're A and T, you're going for it. You're right? going for it either. I, I think you have to. I, I think you have to because again, a touchdown, a point after, and you're in the lead, and then the, the pressure goes back to to the to the Pirates. And you get a look there at Scotty, and we know about his his, his great career at Duke as a wide receiver. Difficulties. They will notify us when it is working again. So the, uh, I'm not sure if you system. caught that, but yeah. the replay system is down. So now you go with your decision. <laughs> you Place, go with decision. In other words, the play stands. Well, play Scotty, stands. Scotty Montgomery. Yeah. But he's done it all. Done it, Duke. It's Pittsburgh Steelers. Bam, bam, bam. Here we go. And, and one of the things, we'll get to it after this play, but he's a protege of David Cutcliffe, and they still keep in touch quite a bit. And he's learned a lot from them, and I'll get to one thing that stuck out that he told us in just a moment. First and goal at the five. Carter takes the snap. He'll throw it. Lobs it up. And a one-handed catch in the left corner of the end zone. Leslie, his second TD grab of the day. And the Yankees have the lead once again. An absolutely perfect fade pass to Zachary Leslie. Carter gets it up in the air. Leslie gets separation, reaches out with the left hand, gets it. Both feet are in. Touchdown, Aggies. Now Ruiz to break the tie. And now the Aggies have the lead. For the first time since the first quarter, it's 21-20. North Carolina a and on top of East Carolina. The second touchdown grab of the day for Zachary Leslie. Garcia versus Porter, Saturday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on Showtime. 
A Sports Center top 10 worthy grab by Zachary Leslie. His second touchdown of the day has given the Aggies a one point lead, their first lead since the first quarter. Khalil Carter hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in over two and a half seasons, but you're able to get a wide receiver in man coverage, Leslie. And he, Gore does a nice job in defending, but the pass was thrown too well. And there's not you can do. You reach out with that one hand, make the play. The Aggies are feeling it in Greensboro and in Greenville. Trayvon Brown on the return. Cuts it back to the outside uh -oh. with a lot of space. Brown to the 35. And a good return for the number one root receiver and playmaker on this Pirate roster. Solid field position to start on this drive. For Reed Herring in this Pirate offense trailing by one early in the fourth quarter. Just what you needed if you're East Carolina. Something to take that momentum away that the ante has. Big time players make big time plays. And Trayvon Brown is certainly that big-time play, the explosion of the interception. Now, let's see now, will Herring try to continue the success he had, throwing the short passes, looking for Brown deep, Pearl underneath inferior, or do they try to run the football to set up something? You're down there. It's the first time he's really under adversity. Herring for Prohl. Out of bounds. Not sure even if McCain or Prohl came up with it, it would have been a completion. Again, McCain, best cover corner on this roster. He's proved it. Why today? Yeah, he, he's an outstanding defender, as we said earlier, with the six interceptions a season ago, eight pass breakups. And you know, the other side, he's got a guy that's very complimentary in Tiambre Abram. And Abram was an all MEAC performer as well. So two outstanding corners for North Carolina A&T. Quick pass for Green. And he has it. Solid gain on second down. Set to a much more third down and manageable four. And in addition to being a good cover corner in Mac McCain, was the second leading uh, tackler on this Aggie football team a season ago. Five Aggies. Out of, five out of 13. Aggies showed blitz. Two third. Third down and four at the 44. Herring for Green. He adjusts and makes the catch. Beautiful back shoulder throw, and Green with a nice job adjusting back to it to haul it in for the first down to the North Carolina A&T 40-yard line. And we talked a moment ago about a nice pass by Carter, dropping it right in the bucket for the touchdown a moment ago. Watch this pass by Herring. Kane is taking away the deep route. The little underneath comes back there. A great catch. To keep this East Carolina drive going by Green. First and ten. Plenty of time for Herring. Launching deep for Brown, and it's too high and incomplete. Around the ten-yard line. For a moment, Brown had some separation. I thought that ball stayed up in the air forever. I just, <laughs> it's either going to be a big catch by Brown or an interception or a deflection by Abram. An incompletion. Now it's second down and ten. Scott the carry has a little bit of space, and he tumbles forward for three. The 37. ECU trailing for the first time since the first quarter. Big third down coming up. They're only one for four. On third down in the second half. And I think you've got to think four down territory if you're East Carolina. They don't make the first down. On third and seven, Herring flushed out to the left. Looking, still looking, throws to a wide open Scott at the 25-yard line. How did Scott get so free? You tell your quarterbacks, don't throw against the grain, throw against your body. Herring goes to a spot, stops, is able to throw back. But a good job of the receiver, Scott, in running with Herring. You'll see him coming out of the corner of your screen. Running, running, throws across the field. Very lucky you've got a guy there. And a nice catch to pick up the first down for East Carolina by Anthony Scott. We've got a player down for North Carolina A&T. That was the 25th first down of the day for ECU. Moving the ball hasn't been a problem for the Pirates. It's capitalizing and finishing off drives. Had to settle for a couple of field goals in the red zone. When you think about the East Carolina football history, you were talking about the facilities a moment ago. and 
you know, Steve Logan put points on the board back in the day when Ed Emery was around. They put points on the board. Pat Dye. Remember Pat Dye? Pat uh-huh. Dye. Pat Dye with East Carolina. They ran the triple option back in the day. So East Carolina has always been able to play good offense and, for the most part, good defense. They've hit the lull defensively, but that may be coming back. Anthony Scott trudging his way inside the 15 to the 13. Hey, don't forget a guy by the name of Lincoln Riley either. Well, Lincoln Riley was a coordinator, so he had to take the – he was giving orders. He was getting orders from somebody else, Skip Holtz in those days, and, of course, Ruffing McNeil and Ruffing now out at Oklahoma. He and Lincoln are doing a great job there, so, yeah. Pitch to the right for Scott. Cuts it back inside. A nice cutback to the 10-yard line. Brings up third down and three. I love the patience and the balance of this offensive set by East Carolina. Not in a big hurry, just doing a lot of good things to execute, using your weapons, run the ball when runs available, making good plays, making good throws. The Aggie defense may be a little winded, another player down. Looks like this is Antoine Wilder, and it is. The transfer from South Carolina, he's had a nice day. Back-to-back plays. With an ECU defender, rather a North Carolina A&T defender going down. And this is something you were alluding to earlier. Depth, more of an issue for A&T just because of the lack of scholarships compared to ECU. But also, it's hot out there. This defense has been on yeah, the field yeah. for a long time today. Yeah, it's, it's more right now. It's you know, late in the day, a beautiful day, I might add, compared to what we had last night. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, thank you. But, but yeah, they, you know, it's hot, and they're pounding, and they're pounding, and, you know, a and T's inability to really have sustainable drives to give this defense an opportunity to to, to rest it, it can take its toll on them. But what I know about A and T, A and T football, what I know about East Carolina football is that they're not going to give anything, and you're going to have to beat them. Okay, so they, we're going to be in for something interesting. It's finally 11:50. Third down and three. Trace Christian the carry. He has the first down, powering inside the five and down to the four-yard line. First and goal upcoming for the Pirates, down by a point. Trace Christian, the red shirt freshman. They describe him as a bruiser. Three 1,000-yard rushing games in each seasons in high school down in Florida. Goes in between the tackles for the tough yards. First and goal, Pirates. Christian stays in the game. Four receivers set for Herring. Christian the grab again, make it the carry again, and he's back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Gain of one, Daryl Johnson on the stop. Daryl Johnson on the tackle. And he's been quiet for most of the game, but he's filled his pressure the last couple of times, forced to fumble, got a sack, comes in with a big tackle there. Johnson goes about 6'5", 232, and a lot of people think that you'll be hearing his name called on Sundays in a few seasons. FCS best 13 game winning streak for A&T second and goal at the four for ECU they go back to Christian and he is ridden down from behind at the five they've gone to that play three straight times Julian McKnight all over Trace Christian watch the get off for of the defensive front McKnight 95 Sam Blue 96 there's Blue initially and the one thing that you always know about an A&T defense, there's going to be two, three, four guys around the football. Twelfth play of the drive coming up. Third down and goal from the five. Bunch formation. Look at Ferrier in motion. Herring looking, throws, pro caught, dropped at the goal line. Scotty Montgomery wants pass interference. He doesn't get the call. And now another A&T defender down as well. And the field goal unit coming out as well for East Carolina. You've got to get this ball low and away from the defender, and that's exactly what it is. There's some contact, I agree. It might be a little early. Yeah, and I think Pro would would also tell you I probably should have caught it. McNeil on the coverage there may have gotten there a second late, but had he caught the football, don't think it would have been a touchdown. You can see his feet are in the end zone, but the ball clearly comes out before he gets to cross the goal line. What a made for an interesting decision for Scotty Montgomery. Can't quite tell who that is. And that's the third defender that's gone to the turf after a play on this drive for North Carolina A&T as you see Scotty Montgomery. Oh, there's Sam Blue who just made the play on Trace Christian getting his calf worked on. Again, it's hot. Just see cramps. It we hope it's just yeah. cramps. 
Blue, one of the transfers from Rutgers. Sam Washington taking over. It's his first season. Rod Broadway went out on top. A 12-0 season. Only team in FCS to finish undefeated. They won the Celebration Bowl. HBCU National Champs. And Rod Broadway turning it over to Sam Washington. And they got off to about as good of a start as you can in the Sam Washington era. Rod Broadway's won every only coach in HBCU football history to won the national championship at three different schools. One one at North Carolina Central. A lot of the guys on his staff were a part of that either as a player or as a coach. Then went down to Grambling with their great history. Won championships there, won the SWAC, won the Black College National Championship, then came to AT, a program that was down about as low as you could go, considering AT's football history, and brought them up. National Championship 12 and 0 last year. Verity's kick is up. Verity's kick is good. Back and forth we go in the fourth quarter. The Pirates jump out in front once again, 23-21, with 10:02 to go in the fourth quarter. Back to Greenville after this. Two lead changes already in the fourth quarter, and we've still got over 10 minutes to play in the game. East Carolina in the season opener, hoping to avoid back-to-back -back losses and back-to-back -back seasons against a very good FCS program. Last year was James Madison, North Carolina A&T, hoping to pull off the upset and earn another win over an FBS opponent. Malik Wilson takes a knee. First and 10 of the 25 for the A&T offense. Let's see if it's Reynard or Carter who comes out with the offense on this drive. It was Carter who led the last touchdown drive for the Aggies. And this game very similar in a lot of ways to their other two wins over S FBS opponents the last two seasons. Found themselves down early against Kent State. Came back with 39-36 win. Last year, the Charlotte win. Charlotte Ran the ball better than anybody had on them all year, over 250 yards rushing. But Mick McCain made some plays. Cartwright made a play. Ran her 35-31 over Charlotte. So this game is falling right in the line for a and maybe trying to pull another upset. But they, not like that. And they go on the ground on first down, and ECU blows it up. Swarm into the football. Turner was there first. I've really been impressed with the interior of the East Carolina defense. Turner's made some plays for Trail's been doing, has done a really nice job of setting the edge. We've called Nate Harvey's name several times along with Jalen Price. I, I am impressed, and if I'm an East Carolina fan, I've got to be hopeful that this defense may be clicking this year. That was the ninth tackle for loss. They go screen to Cartwright, and Sutton, he's there. Nothing, another loss. Make that ten tackles for loss this afternoon. Devin Sutton comes from his nickel position. And keep an eye right there. Boom! Makes the big-time tackle on a guy that's hard to bring down guard right. And Sutton should be excited. That's a huge play defensively. This crowd coming alive at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The Boneyard wants to see a stop on third down and 14. a and is 3 of 10 today. ECU rushes four. Deep ball. Wilson caught inside the 40 and down to the 29-yard line. A beautiful ball and a first down for the Aggies. Again, I mentioned making plays. Carter sits in the pocket. You're in man coverage. One guy to beat. Post corner to the post, and there's a deep. And watch Cook Blackwell. Oh, no. Get it, get it. you got to make a play. Great play offensively by North Carolina and team to read the defense and get one-on-one -on -one coverage with the fastest guy on the team. A gain of 49 yards. And here's Martin on first down from the 30. And a stack of ECU defenders stops him at the 29-yard line. Malik Wilson showing off that 4-3-40 speed. That's his eighth career catch. Well, would have been his eighth career catch of 50 or more yards if he had gotten an extra one. He is the deep threat on this A&T offense. What you like about this A&T football team, win, lose, or draw, is a close football game, and Coach Sam Washington is willing to use some other players to try to you know get something going. Not sure if Reynard is injured or not, but Carter stepped in and done a really solid job. Wilson in motion, second and nine at the 29. Quick pass for Wilson. 
Breaks another tackle inside the 20. He lost the football. Battle for it. Who has it? Ante has it. Well, smoke screen for Wilson. Get him outside the perimeter and make a play. And the ball is <laughs> going around. You okay? You're I'm right. good. Listen, okay. we've got a great yeah, okay. finish coming for I, you. I know. I know. I, I saw. <laughs> I see. Ball is out of bound, but Wilson's able to recover. But a little quick screen. Trying to use your weapon. Spread this East Carolina defense around. Try not to let some of that pressure that's, that they've seen all afternoon affect them. And Carter, his ability to run the football is that extra weapon that the Aggies needed right now. Aggies in the red zone, down by two. Carter pressure, gets rid of it. The DB fell down, but thankfully for ECU, the throw was well off target and complete. Stan, I want to go back to the end of the first half. A third down and 18, and they converted on a halfback screen, resulting in the touchdown with six seconds to go in a half. And then here at the end, here earlier on the drive, a third down and long, and they convert for 49 yards. Third and long a couple of times, two big conversions today for the Aggies. you got to make a play. But the pressure that time that, that you felt by Carter on the backside to get rid of that football, looking for his intended receiver was Hicklin. Hicklin couldn't get out of the break quick enough. Second down and 10. Play action. Quick pass inside the five. Touchdown, Aggies. <laughs> Elijah Bell, a and back on top. Third lead change in the fourth quarter. Win your one-on-one -on -one battles. a and goes on to win this ball game. Remember the name Khalil Carter. Noel Ruiz on for the extra point. Almost blocked, but Ruiz knocks it through. It's a five-point game. 28-23. A&T on top after the 17-yard touchdown pass from Carter to Bell. Red Sox, Sunday at 8 on ESPN. The ESPN app, now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Another lead change in Greenville. a and back on top of ECU with 7.05 to go in the fourth quarter. Khalil Carter, the backup quarterback, has played two drives. He has two touchdown passes, including a clutch 49-yard completion on the last drive to Malik Wilson. Seven plays, 75 yards, just under three minutes. And the Pirates playing from behind once again. Brown a chance to return from the five. Looking for some room, spins past the 25 and up to the 27. And so can Reed Herring in the Pirate offense answer another score from the A&T offense. Plenty of time. Timeouts remaining for ECU, too. So this is just about doing what you've done well. Over, what is it, 28? What, that last time I count was 31 of 51, I think it is. Still 31, 31 of 51, 51 for, for, for Herring. So, you know, he's had a lot of success. The short passing game. You've got a lot of weapons. And now if you're North Carolina A&T, this is, this is what I call DJ time. Daryl Johnson, time for him to put some pressure on the quarterback. Antoine Wilder was late getting on the field as Herring's first pass is complete to Blake Prohl. And he would have had four progress to the 30, but he tried to turn it around to go upfield, and he's actually going to only pick up two yards instead of three. Thirteen game winning streak for North Carolina ANC defending HBCU national champions. Herring pressured, and that pass is incomplete. Looking for Trayvon Brown around midfield. Brings up third down and eight. And, and, and you're finally seeing, if you're an a &T fan, as you look at Herring, who took a hard lick by Daryl Johnson. Johnson's come of, come of light the last couple of possessions. Take a look at number 40, the lower part of your screen, comes in there. He's on the backside of the play. Ooh. And they make a sandwich. He and Julian McKnight, 
Knight's been all over the place all afternoon, and that did not look good for hearing. Yeah, when you see that head bounce off the turf, that's not great. He was driven right into the grass. As you see Kingsley Effetti warming up the redshirt freshman from Charlotte. We thought we might see him in certain packages, but right now we're focused on, on the health of Reed Herring, who just took a nasty hit. Fetty played over Advance High School in Charlotte. Big time arm. And that's good to see Reed Herring walking off under his own power. As Kingsley Fetty, 6'3, 222, enters the game in a tough spot for this offense, facing a third down and eight he, from the 29. Yeah, Fetty gives you a different look. He can get to the outside with his legs. A very, very strong arm, threw for over 5,000 yards at Advance High School in Charlotte. Understands the system, but he's now under fire. Ifedi alone in the shotgun. Four-man rush to the left side. It's caught short of a first down, though, at the 34. Does ECU go for it here? I don't think you do. They may, but I don't think you do. I, I think there's too much football yet to be played. And even though Ifedi completed that pass, he's going to need a few minutes to get him get his game management under control. I, I like the decision by Scotty Montgomery. Pin them back. You, your defense has played a good football game. They, they really have. They've given up a couple of explosion plays lately to A&T, but I, I would not want to risk it to change the game totally if I was East Carolina. John Young, who took a hit the last time he was out there, is back, and he looks to boot this away. It's a good one. Fair catch called for and made inside the 20. That's a great yeah, punt yeah. from John Young. Flips the field. Th exactly. And so with 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter, ECU needs a stop on this drive. They've been unable to come up with one the last two. You see the backup quarterback for ECU, Kingsley Ifedi there. The backup quarterback on the other side, Khalil Carter. Two drives, six for seven, 89 yards, and two important scores. The Aggies in front by five. Last season in the opener, ECU here at home fell to FCS defending champ James Madison. They've dominated much of this game, but this second half has been a bit more even. We've seen three lead changes in this fourth quarter. Carter remains the quarterback. Got a shot a second ago real quick. I think that was Brown that they were attending to on the sideline for East Carolina. Keep that in the back of your mind when the Pirates get the ball back. Carter to throw. Looking deep. Fires deep for Wilson, and it's incomplete. The ball was underthrown at the 40-yard line. Witherspoon on the coverage of Wilson. Michael Witherspoon's really having to earn his keep today. Good coverage. And makes the wide receiver, Wilson, kind of reroute himself and go outside. If he had a clean line inside, that could have been six. Now, great job that time by Witherspoon of keeping leverage on the offensive player. And he going for the big play. Second down and 10 of the 19. a with 281 yards of offense. And this running play is going nowhere. Uh, another tackle for loss for this ECU defense. They're in double digits. Sutton, the first to meet the running back. And it's third down and 12, another third down and long stand. Leading tackler on last from last year coming back is Sutton. And he certainly played like that defensive leader today. Comes up with a tackle for loss, nailing third down and long for North Carolina A&T State University. Do you play conservative, let your defense try to win this game, or do you try to go for it, get the first down, keep the drive going? Third down and 12. ECU rushes four. Carter hit. He lost the football inside the five. And thankfully for a and an offensive lineman jumped on it at the two. But they're not out of the woods just yet. They'll have to punt from the back of the end zone. David Blackwell decides to draw up some pressure. They bring it from the inside as well as the outside. A little twist right there. Ball comes loose. Good job tackling by Jalen Price. And fortunately for North Carolina A&T, 
Vontae Keys is able to recover it, but boy, they're in deep field position now for their fourth down play. Big time play by Price. Dante Keys was beat on the outside by Price, and he saves a huge turnover. And now the crowd at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, they appreciate their defense. They haven't seen defense like this in a couple of years. David Blackwell's group has been great today, even though they trail by five. But they're really into it now. The Boneyard wants to see another big play on this punt. But again, an injured offensive lineman for North Carolina A&T still being tended to at the five-yard line. This ECU defense allowed 500 yards or better in eight football games last year. And the one that leaves a bad taste in their mouth, really, a couple of games, the West Virginia game, the Virginia Tech game, and then at the end of the season, giving up over 640 yards against Memphis. So they knew they had to improve. The worst defense in all of college football, basically, statistically, last season, and they've made some adjustments. I see some of these adjustments, and that was a big-time play, play by Price. Now a and has got to get the punt off. And can their defense, which is pretty doggone good too now, don't think it's not, can their defense hold the Pirates? And will Infetti come back in the ball game? I see Herring right now on the bench. Helmet off, sitting beside two East Carolina personnel. Maybe one's a red shirt player and one might be one of the medical staff. So we'll just have to wait and see. But this is great. Football's back. <laughs> this is everything you could want. We've had, we've had lead changes in this fourth quarter. Yes. We've had big plays, a pick six in the first half, a 50-yard completion in this half, a one-handed catch as well. I mean, this is everything you could want. And a team from FCS trying to pull off an upset of an FBS team. So here we go. An it was important only play here. About 38 yards per kick a season ago. Remember he had one that go off the side of his foot earlier in the game. Trayvon Brown waiting at the a and 40 to receive this punt. And it's a short one. Brown has a chance to return it on a hop from the 42. A lot of space to the right. Brown to the 30. Brown is down at the 27. How about this field position? Well, you asked a moment ago about do you go for it, and now you can see Scotty's thinking about that and their defensive staff. Our defense can win this football game. They flip the field, excellent field position for the East Carolina Pirates with four minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the ball game. ECU started a quarterback today in Reed Herring, who was playing in his first career game. His first career start, I should say. And we just saw him with his helmet on the sideline, sitting on the bench, but guess what? This kid's back in the game, and that's a great sign. Well, he took a big hit, so it certainly is a, a nice sign to see him back out there. And now the question is now with the defensive staff of North Carolina A&T, because he was rattled a moment ago, how much pressure will they try to dial up? 4-10 to go in the fourth quarter. ECU down five. Scott in motion. Pressure coming from a and Quick pass is batted at the line. Herring was fading away. And it was knocked down by Sam Blue. Good to see him back in the game as well. Put in the pressure like we saw. Get your hand up. Not a lot you can do for that. Good play by Sam Blue. Blue came in last season with 11 tackles for loss. One of the leading sack guys in the conference with six. Comes from pressure with the outside. Second down, Pirates. Ball at the 27. Empty set in the shotgun. Herring to throw. Over the middle to the end zone. Off the hands of Green. Green a little bit bumped there. Nice little deep post. He had the time. Abram, Abram we told you. A very good defensive back for this ANT team. McCain gets a lot of the headlines and a lot of the attention on the scout. So they throw a lot of times away from McCain at Abrams' side. All conference this season ago, he comes up with a good play in man coverage against Green. Big third down. Maybe the most important third down of the game. Third and ten at the 27. Herring flushed out to the right, looking, throws, caught. Short of a first down, though, to Green for the 21, make it the 22-yard line. Gain of five sets up fourth and five. Do you kick the field goal here, or do you keep the offense on the field? Well, they're at practice every day, so they know what they can do and what they can't. I think if you're trying to play for the win, don't know if you want to ask your defense to make a play. i go for this if I'm Scotty Montgomery. Three and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The offense stays out there. Understand, it's a fourth and five. You've got to run your route six or seven yards beyond and come back. 
Don't be short. Two for two on fourth down today. Herring Pistol. to throw. Looking. Hit as he throws. Left side. It's tipped and almost intercepted. Incomplete. And A&T's defense comes up with a stop. Pirates cannot capitalize on the incredible field position they had. And they go four and out. The defense puts pressure on here and has to get rid of the ball a second before he needed to. And you throw to the side of your best receiver versus the best defensive back around. McCain versus Brown. McCain wins that battle. This game's not over yet, though. ECU, two timeouts left, 3.15 to play, down by five. You'd assume North Carolina A&T will just try and run the ball here. Try and bleed as much of this clock as possible. Yeah, your four-minute offense is in effect right now. you got to make East Carolina use, your, use their timeouts. a and has got to think first down. You've got to get one, maybe two first downs and have ball security because you know the Pirates are going to come after with everything they've got. Khalil Carter still out there, the backup. He has two touchdown passes today. The give goes to the tailback. Cartwright and he's muscling shy of the 25. You see his defense was trying to rip the ball out to no avail. Brings up second down and seven. The Aggies will not be in any type of hurry to try to get plays going, but they've got to continue to be aggressive. You got to start thinking if you're East Carolina when you want to try to use your timeouts. Second down and seven. You would think probably after this play. After the, yeah, after this play, especially on down and distance. Second and seven. Clock winding, two and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Four, three, two, one, go. Cartwright takes it, and he's brought down behind the line. Harvey again. I think he might be ECU's best defensive player today. Well, he's been around the football all afternoon long. He's had some help. Sutton's in there. Alex Turner, 94. ECU calls timeout. East Carolina calls that timeout. They'll have one left. And so, really, I, I'm not, I don't want to be that dramatic. They made the play. But this is one of the biggest plays in the football game for both teams. Well, ECU has one timeout left now. It's third down and nine. We've seen two extremely clutch third down and long conversions by East, or rather by A&T. Let's see if they can come up with another one here as we take a look at our Carhartt player of the game. Let's take a look who's been putting in work. Brought to you by Carhartt. And it's the backup quarterback, Khalil Carter. He's played much of this fourth quarter. A couple of touchdown passes. And what a job he's done in relief of Lamar Renard. Khalil Carter missed the season due to injury. Has come in and really, really stepped up and played. Missed the entire 2016 year. Only threw nine passes a season ago for less than 100 yards. You asked a moment ago, you were talking about the play call here. I, I think you do something in the outside. I, I would be very leery to throw the ball because if it's an incompletion, the clock stops. If you're A&T, you're not trying to hit, help East Carolina. But a first down, the clock stops on the first down, and then you're back in play. Make ECU use your timeout. But we're going to find it all out in just a second. Here we go. Biggest play of the game, third and nine. They're going to throw it. Quick pass over the middle. Witherspoon makes the tackle well shy of the first down at the 27. A gain of only four on third down. And the Pirates, after they take their final timeout to stop the clock with 2.18 to go, will get the ball back. That's a much-needed stand by David Blackwell's defense. They've only surrendered 269 total yards today. Safe pass. By by A and T. Love the gray helmets. That's a new look. That's just what you do when you win the national championship. You got you get different uniforms. So you got the got the things. They play Gardner the Webb. They beat them last year. Morgan State's got a new coach coming in, so they're going to be able to do some stuff there. The South Carolina State game, Buddy Pew, and then Bulldogs. That's a Thursday night ESPN game. That'll be interesting. Fam U's got some things going. Bethune's going to be a good team. Norfolk, Latrell Scott had a big win last night. That's good for him. Savannah, and then the date that they circle, November 17th, the Eagles and the Aggies, or wait a minute, the Aggies and the Eagles. Depends on where you live and who you're pulling for, but it's always a big game in Durham. So 
NT's got some challenges on the schedule, but the only way they're worrying about is right now. Rivers to punt again. Brown back to receive, and this is a wobbler. It bounces at the 40 and takes an A&T roll to the 38. And so with 2.07 to go in the fourth quarter, down 28-23, let's see what the sophomore Reed Herring has in this two-minute offense without any timeouts, hoping to lead his team to a game-winning touchdown and open the season in the win column. You keep the guy, the, the offensive player for your defender, in play. So there's a tendency always to think you defend the outside, and you do, but you've got to cover the entire width of the field now because the middle sometimes is going to be exposed, and you can sometimes find receivers on seam routes or deep posts, and you've got to be conscious of that for your A&T. And if you read, you've got to understand that and know exactly where you want to throw the ball, especially in your secondary guys. Four-man rush on first down. Herring has time, dumps low over the middle, and incomplete intended for Hussein Howe. Stops the clock with 2.02 to play. Herring had plenty of time, just nowhere to go downfield. Well, no, he, he didn't have as much time as you'd think because you had Blue on one side and you had Johnson. Remember that hit he took mm -hmm. the possession before, and so he knew he had to get rid of the football. There was nice protection, but not good enough. The pressure now, A&T defensively is getting to East Carolina just a bit. Empty set. Over the middle, caught by Prohl, turning it upfield, close to a first down to the 46. And there's your over the middle. Good route run, good run after as much as you can and get down by Prohl, third down. 147 and counting left in the fourth quarter. Pirates back on the line. Herring to throw for the 54th time, and that pass was almost picked off by Deion Jones. Instead, it's incomplete, intended for Prohl again. Third, rather, fourth down and one upcoming here. What do you call here? Deion Jones does a great job of extending and getting outside. The ball's a little low and away. And he reaches out and makes a big-time play. So what do you do with fourth and one? Let's go inside. Maybe let Scott get the first down. This is the game. Fourth this and is. one. Hussein Howe is the tailback. Howe is an inside runner. Fourth and one. The handoff to Howe. The first down and more into Aggie territory to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight. Fresh set of downs for the Pirates. Clock stops momentarily till they set the football. Now it's moving 90 seconds to go. Good call by the offensive staff and a good job at the line of scrimmage by East Carolina winning your battle. Spellacy here and in them. McGinn, they do a good job finding the hole. Herring steps up over the middle, has his man. It's Anthony Scott, close to a first down at the 35. Clock keeps moving. They're a yard shy. Second down and short up coming with 110 to play. Scott's trying to say something. you got to get the ball in play. You don't have time to talk to anybody right now except as a teammate. 13-game winning streak on the line for North Carolina A&T as we reach the one-minute mark. Broken play, Herring up the middle, picks up the first down on the draw. We'll call it a draw. I'm not sure that was the play design, though. Got the yard he needed, stops the clock for a second with 57 ticks to play. Now they wind it up. No timeouts left for ECU. 50 seconds to play. First and 10 at the 35. Herring against a four-man rush. Steps up, hit as he throws. That almost was a completion, but it's broken up at the last second. Nicely done by Richie Kittles. Blake Prohl looked like he had it, but... Kittles came in at the last second to punch it free. Kittles, the Florida Atlantic transfer from down in Florida, Fort Lauderdale area, comes up. The defensive backs, we've talked about it, we talked about it, and we got to tell you some more. They close very well. They give up some yards, but they don't break, and they don't mind hitting you. you got to start thinking first down and end zone now for East Carolina. 57th pass of the day. They get the 59th, and it's complete to Green. He shakes off a tackler. To the 35, and he gets out of bounds Smart at the 31. Play. Smart play by Herring, not to give away the play. Brown comes up, makes the catch, and then gets out of bounds. 33 seconds to go. Take another look. Pressure getting there, gets outside, come back, make the play. Good catch by East Carolina. You're doing exactly what you knew. That was green, I should have said, instead of Brown. Nevertheless, Smart, get the ball, and get out of bounds. He lost his cleat. Had to come off for a second. Third down and six at the 31 with 33 seconds to go. Obviously, four down territory. Herring 
to the left side for Scott. He fell down at the 37. Clock keeps moving. 25 seconds gotta to hurry, go. Gotta ECU go. has to hurry. 20 seconds. ECU may have gotten away with a hold of an Aggie defender, but nevertheless, the ball's up. So here we go. We're going to sit back and watch Aggies, Pirates. 10 seconds left. ECU was late getting a player on. Seven seconds left. Oh, my goodness. I can't gotta believe go, this. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. They've got to snap it. This is the last play of the game. Oh, Herring to the end zone. He's got two guys there. It is. Oh, it's broken up and intercepted by A&T. And that's the ball game. A&T knocks off East Carolina. 14 in a row for the Aggies. And a heartbreak for the Pirates. That's Jamal Darden down on the play. ECU so unorganized at the end. Couldn't get players on the field. Slow to do that. A&T played it exactly like you do. N deeper than deep. No one gets behind you. A&T's got a sign up, a big banner over on the corner of Benbo near the Corbett Center. It says Aggies do. Well, now you can change it to say Aggies did. 28-23 your final. The Aggies improved a 2-0 on the year. How about the start of the Sam Washington era? An upset win over number six Jacksonville State and an upset win on the road of East Carolina. Which is like I told you, the other two games they played against Kent State and Charlotte, they were high early, they struggled, they struggled. The defense caught on, the offense caught them, and they found a way to win. A big win, a huge win, probably the biggest win, i.e. Celebration Bowls and MEAC Championships in a and football history. Congratulations to the Aggies. Pirates will bounce back. A tough one for the Pirates. Reed Herring in his first career start. 36 of 61, 304 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions, and a really tough pill to swallow if you're Scotty Montgomery and the ECU Pirates. That'll do it for us here in Greenville. 28-23, your final, a back-and-forth fourth quarter. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. So for Stan Luter, I'm Josh Appel saying so long from Dowdy Ficklin Stadium where the final score is North Carolina A&T 28, ECU 23. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.